how we doing everybody? Hope you're all well. Wow, we've got a few people already in the chat. Saturday afternoon, hope you're all good. What are we saying? Dude, where are you at? Well, Dean Lovat, I'm right here, Mr. Impatient One. Fashionably late. Yes, Rail Flux, I am. You know why? Because it's my goddamn channel. Just kidding, I appreciate every single one of you. Hope you're all well. Hold on, just gonna try and see if I can open up this live window on another page so I can see the chart. My start time says, says six or five, so I'm still feeling. Hold on, we're gonna mute it, we're gonna mute it, we're gonna hear myself back. So, what's going on everyone? No fights this weekend, which feels a little weird, doesn't it? Hold on, we're just gonna pop this chat out. We're almost there, we're almost there. We're almost there. There's the chat. We're gonna make it bigger. Oh, massive chats. There we go, and I'm gonna put that right there in front of me so I can look at it, and then we're all good. So anyway, there we are. L to Liverpool, no I know. Commiserations to all the Liverpool fans out there. That was a shame, wasn't it? I was gonna do the live at 2.30 p.m., but obviously a lot of people in the comment section said the, uh, the UEFA, the Champions League finals on, so we delayed it a little bit. Such a shame though, such a shame. Unlucky Liverpool. Uh, Mr. Bisping will do a meet and greet soon. It'll complete my bucket list. Well, reckless Javi, I will be doing a meet and greet at Tales from the Octagon. That is one of the things that I do do afterwards. So if you're around, Ant, please put a, uh, a little um, link for tickets. Anyway. How we doing, everybody? Wheeling out the wife, begging for super chats. Well, Adam Beanie, I'm not begging for fuck all, mate. And if you want, you can unsubscribe right now and fuck right off. How about that, Beanie? Yeah, you little prick. Um, shout out, please, champ. All right, all right, you got it, buddy. Reckless Javi. No, we already did that one. That is Ashley Price Slots. Hey, could you shout out my son, Comrade? Thanks, brother. Comrade, hope you're well, my friend. That's your son. Uh, this is your dad, Anthony Clements. Comrade. I've got a brother called Comrade. What a fantastically strong name. Hope you're well down there in Texas. Okay, so no fights. So what should we talk about to start with? Ant put a poll up. Non-MMA. Give me some non-MMA subjects to riff on to talk about. We've got a little bit of the OBS stuff going on, so we can, uh, we can do that. Oh, I should have done this one before. I'll just... Uh, We'll put that there, and uh, we've got mix on. I've got to delete this one. Got to delete, remove that. Okay, okay, okay. So, what's new, everyone? Uh, we've got some super chats here. No, we don't. I, I forgot to open another window for the OBS, so I've got to do it live on air. So we need some training. All right, well, I'm going to do some training videos at some point, but I'm not like a, an online coach, guru, you know, McDojo life type of guy. Will Tales from the Octagon be coming to the United States at any point and would love to see it in New York? Well, Ainsley, the answer to that is I don't know. I'd like to, I'd like to, but again, I always say it. I'm not trying to start a, a career as a stand-up comedian, which is kind of what Tales from the Octagon is turning into. Um, We'll see how this round goes. That, that would be the answer. If this round goes as well as last time, then yeah, why not? Um, but we'll see, we'll see. You know, maybe I end it after this one if I'm completely honest. My wife doesn't want me to do it. As you know, she won't come. She won't come. Yeah, she will not attend. Should have been the correct words I should have said. But yeah, Ainsley, we'll see Ainsley, but thank you very much for the uh, suggestion. Any one of you guys or girls drink your coffee black? I'm drinking my coffee black. I'm trying to do it because I drink a lot of coffee and therefore it's a lot of cream in every coffee. And I don't know how many calories are in the average portion of cream. And I like a lot of cream. I'm sure that's a lot of calories throughout the day. And put a poll up. Do you like your coffee black or with cream? Like a real man, have it black. I always feel very effeminate asking for a lot of cream, but that's how I like it. But I've since discovered that without cream doesn't taste bad either. Here we go. What do we want? Basic fitness, stand-up techniques, BJ gra grappling, or, or uh, basic fitness. There we go. Or a fitness for fighters. And you want stand-up techniques, 55% so far on the poll. Thank you very much. Um, tonight, I'm going to go see Top Gun 2. Have any of you guys seen that? 
Uh, you do want, 46% of you want the stand-up technique, so we will provide that to you. Little drills, some drills that I like to do. I'll get rid of that pole, close pole. Uh, Top Gun 2 tonight, I hear it's very, very good. If you don't watch a channel called Critical Drinker, you should subscribe to that if you like watching about movies and stuff like that. He's great, he's got a very awesome channel. And according to Anthony Evans, that's manning the polls right now, he says that the Critical Drinker says it's good. So tonight we're gonna go for dinner, then we're gonna go watch Top Gun 2. And I'm dragging my wife. Rebecca does not want to come. She does not want to come for some goddamn reason. I don't know why that is, but um, she's coming. I don't care. And she doesn't want to go to the movies. She says, I'm not going to go to the movies, the cinema. It's crap. I'm like, babe, if we're going to watch Top Gun 2, if we're going to see like the planes, <laughs> fighter jets and all that shit, where better else to do it than at the movie theatre? We're going to pull up, by the way. Let me know. Black, white, very white. T. Oh. You like a nice cup of tea, do you? Which one of the losses gets to me the most? That's a good question, coming from Dustin Clark. Dustin, none of them get to me. And honestly, it sounds like that's an obvious thing that someone would say to deflect from losing a fight. Oh, none of them bother me. They used to bother me, but I'm retired. I've retired in 2017. So none of them get to me. But in terms of, to answer your question, in terms of which ones... Yeah, kind of get on my tits. Tim Kennedy would be one of them because I took that far too soon and he's just one of the most annoying bastards on the planet. So definitely him. Who else have we got? Uh, Vandalay Silver. That was annoying because I clearly beat Vandalay Silver. We've got a poll up, by the way. What are the, what, what are the answers to the poll? Wow. You guys are real people, real men. Macho, 42%. Like it black. I'm having it black. Less calories. How many calories do you think are in uh, the average portion of cream? No, so anyway, Vandalay Silver. That was one that kind of got on my nerves because I, um, I thought I beat him. And Vandalay Silver, obviously, being the legendary guy that he is. Uh, safari, Safari, Safari. Where's the Safari? Where's the Safari? I don't see Safari start page. I'm looking for the Safari start page, but it's not there, you son of a bitch. Window capture, window capture. Sorry guys, doing the OBS, one second. Bear with me, cancel, boom, I'm useless. Close that, we'll go like this. I just gotta open something up. Oh dearie me. What are you doing with your weekends? Watching me? Well, that's a shame, isn't it? I apologize for that. Window capture, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get rid of window capture. I should have done this beforehand, I do apologize. Just give me one minute and we'll have this all taken care of and running very smoothly and integrating fun little subjects. So now, I should see Safari somewhere. Come on, come on, it's not there. So there it is, Safari, boom, bosh. And then we put window capture there, and then I'm on the screen. Look at this. Marius Pujanowski, scary knockdown, leaves Michael Matella down. Hmm. Anyway, we'll go to that in a minute. We'll have a look at some of these super chats first. Oh, we got a new member. Luke Gledhill, you are a conceiver. One day a believer, possibly an achiever. Well done to you, mate. Welcome to the club. Why did Jesse on fire defend the grooming of Pat to Rose? He said he would still be with his wife if he was 25 and she was 15. Um, I didn't see the conversation in, in mind, in question, so I can't really comment on it too much without seeing it. Um, I know that's a cop out and I apologize for that. Blade syndrome. But I haven't seen it, so I don't really want to comment on it. Jesse on fire is... Um, He's got a good YouTube channel. He came and hosted the Believe You Me podcast with me a couple of times. Subscribe on that one if you haven't done. So yeah, I don't want to talk shit until I see it. You know what I mean? But thank you. It, is it emotional watching, thinking about the veto fight because of what happened with your eyes? Sorry if that's a rude question. No, you're okay, Jordan. Not a rude question at all whatsoever. Um, and it isn't emotional. No, I mean, I haven't watched it. There's nothing to watch. The first round was pretty shit, pretty uneventful. Neither man really engaged. And I was trying to, he was trying to, but it was it was a tentative first round. And then the second round, he got me with a head kick, you know, and, and that's all there is to it. It doesn't get emotional. Not at all. Uh, I do have to get a new eyepiece though soon. This one's getting very, very loose. Anywho, uh, what else do we have here? Will you ever do a YouTube collab with Mine Aiga? He does great technique videos. I don't know him. Um, so let's go through some of these chats. 
He's a shitty Man United fan. Well, I'm not a shitty Man United fan, whoever said that. Um, I'm not a shitty Man United fan. I guess I am a Man United fan, not a shitty Man United fan. But I don't know much about football. I'll take it or leave it. But I did just watch the second half of the Champions League. And, uh, nah, frustrating. That's kind of my problem with fucking football, though. 90 minutes and one goal. You know what I'm saying? You watch basketball, it's every... Five seconds, p'tumf, p'tumf. they're landing baskets all over the place. They're jumping through the air. They're very athletic. And in football, one guy kind of touches and they fall over and they're like, oh. you know, and I get it. It's professional fouls. They're trying to get an advantage. But it turns me off a little bit, if I'm totally honest. So, did I bet on the Champions League final? I did not. Real Madrid odds were good. Do you bet? No, I just did that one. What else have we got? Jesse on fire grooming. No. Why did you... Okay, don't like that one. All right, so... And put a poll up. Do we think Top Gun 2 is going to be any good? And I know that's a lame question. What do you want to talk about? Where is Brantendo? Sick boy. Brantendo's probably at home in uh, Rosemead, I think it is. Yeah, probably at home. Brantendo still does the editing on the videos. He just doesn't come to my house as much. We figured out there's no need for him to do that. He would come down here and we try and do a bunch of videos at once. It's just not... It's not the smartest way to do it. It's about like an hour and 20 minute drive for him. I can do it all here. And then I just drop box in the videos and he edits them. So uh, yeah, Brantendo's still about my friend. Shout out to Brantendo. Shout out to Anthony Evans and John Brannigan, my uh, YouTube dude. Now listen, Rebecca is at Ralph's. That's the American version of say Tesco's. She's buying a few things. She's doing a bit of shopping. And when she comes back, she's gonna sit down and join me. So if you've got questions for Rebecca, uh, Put them in your pipe and wait for a minute, but keep them respectful, please. We don't want any bullshit. We don't want any nastiness. I don't want to lose my temper. You know what I'm saying? Can I do a breakdown on Luke versus Costa? Yeah, what is going on with that? Paolo Costa versus, uh, let's have a look. Paolo Costa versus um, Luke Rockhold. Looks like it's being pushed back. Paolo Costa versus Luke Rockhold. See what this comes up with. Um, we've got news. Yeah, so they, they, they pushed it back. Luke drops the truth bomb on Paolo Costa. What is the truth bomb? What is truth dropping? And here we go. What is he on about? He drops a truth bomb. What do you think the truth bomb is going to be? It's going to be something ridiculous. It's not even going to be a bomb at all. Not that I want it to be a bomb, of course. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Luke Rockhold is finally set to return to the UFC after being forced out due to injuries. He's set to meet Paolo Costa, and there is plenty of beef between the two of them. He goes on to say, where is the... Oh, oh, Paolo Costa is pathetic, and the kid needs to sign the contract and agree to the wait, agree to the fight, agree to the date, agree to the dance, and blows a kiss. Let's go. Don't be blowing the kisses. Uh, there's always been questions. It was July 2nd, then it was July 30th, and now this bitch is trying to move the fight to fucking August. I'm sick and tired or just fucking this shit. I, but I really want to go and beat that fucker's ass, so we're going to do it in August, it is. All right, well, where's the truth bomb? Ain't no truth bomb there, buddy boy. Uh, but that is a little crap. I mean, Costa needs to get his act together on terms of the weight. I'm assuming they're pushing the weight back because... Of the, you know, sorry, the date back, pardon me, because of Paolo Costa's weight. Remember last time against uh, Vittori, he came in um, very, 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 very heavy. The pole results are in. The pole results are in, and Rebecca's walking in the door. Do we think Top Gun 2 is any good? Think it'll suck, 42%. Very negative opinion. Very pessimistic, half glass, glass half empty type of approach there. Think it's going to be great, 39%, kind of close. Seen it, it's crap. Ooh, seen it, it's great. 10-10. Yeah, dividing. So, all right, let's see what we got here on the MMA front. We'll go to the news. Oh, no, that's not it. That's not it. But that's not it. That's not it. Here we go. This is it. What do we have? Mario Pudzianowski. Do you know who Mario Pudzianowski is? He was the... Um, World's strongest man at one point. Now he fights in, I think it's KSW, they call it, in Poland. Huge show in Poland. Never been to it. Would like to go sometime. Apparently get like 40,000 people in attendance. And Mario Pudzianowski is one of the uh, 
the big, big stars that they have there will end that poll there, aren't um, So, Pudjanowski, Conor McGregor, my UFC career is just beginning. So boxing will wait. Huh, interesting. Let's have a look at this one. Aljo's approach to talking about fighter pay respectfully makes it hard for Dana to dismiss it. Huh, all right. Well, let's have a look here. Conor McGregor says, UFC story is just beginning. Prioritizing boxing or MMA over boxing. Well, he needs to do that. He's an MMA fighter. He's not a boxer. Uh, let's have a look. As a whole, McGregor has reached the highest heights of mixed martial arts. Correct. Saturday, McGregor attended the World, the Monaco Grand Prix. Very nice. Where he provided a health update. My body's doing great, you know. After this, we're going to, going to be training bit by bit. I should be able to kick now. I have another CT scan in the coming days. Then I'll be clear to kick. Once I can kick and I can do a Conor McGregor and I can grapple. I'll be back in no time. Boxing training is going well. And strength training. That's all. I'm excited to get back. Boxing is my first loving combat sport, said McGregor. It's boxing. I had such a great time the last time I was out there. Obviously, my return will be inside the octagon for the UFC and mixed martial arts. That story is far from over. In fact, the story is just being wrote. It's the beginning. That's where I'll make my return. But boxing, I will grace the squared circle again in the future. Yeah, and I don't, I don't doubt that. I'm sure he will box again probably when he's done with his UFC career, but his UFC career isn't just beginning, let's be honest. I, I would say, I would say respectfully, his UFC career is coming, is, is on the downslide now. It, it went up, when you're on the roller coaster, you're getting up, you're getting all excited, you're getting excited, ah! Then you go over the top, and you know you go down that initial bit, wah, and it's exciting, it's crazy. But then it start, the ride starts to slow down. The ride, this is a great analogy that I just came up with. And the ride's coming to a slow. That's what's going on with McGregor's career. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he knocks out Kamara Usman and becomes the welterweight champion. But I don't think that's going to happen. He's lost three out of his last four. But the, the heights he achieved were phenomenal. I came nowhere near that. A double champ. Went undefeated for so long. Set the world on fire. The number one highest paid star. The, most, the biggest star. The most famous star by far. And the richest and the wealthiest. And the most worldly recognised. But you can't stay on top forever. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not being insulting when saying that. But when you beat all your competition for the most part and then you lose three of your last four, that sets a tone. That says we're probably coming to the end of this ride. However, however, not necessarily. You know, it might prove everybody wrong. Me, most importantly, might prove everything what I'm saying right now to be a lot of nonsense. But I don't think he will. I, th I think he struggles with most people in the top five at lightweight. And I think he struggles at welterweight. And that's simply because you can't stay on top forever. And I say this almost every time, every goddamn live. Uh, is Connor's UFC story just beginning? Uh, reached the final chapter, reached the final page. Or oh, fuck Connor. I never said that. That's Anthony Evans' words. All right, Connor's in Newport Beach. Ever meet for a drink? No, we don't. We don't. <laughs> I don't think he wants to come hang out with me or talk to me. Speaking of fighters near retirement, how many fights do I think Usman has left? Yeah, you know, Usman, I don't think... I mean, Usman's in his prime. Obviously, he's got the hand issue right now, but by all accounts, he'll be back sooner rather than later, and I hope so. Get well, champ, if you're watching. Um, but I think... Us and I, am I imagining this? But I'm pretty sure I heard Usman saying he doesn't want to fight forever. He doesn't want to be one of these guys that sticks around too long. So I think for Usman... I don't know. I don't. I, who knows? It isn't going to be anything crazy. Ten at the most. Ten at the most, I would say. You know, I mean, he's talking about boxing Canelo. Uh, I don't think that would be a great idea. LUFC, not Leeds. Leeds, Leeds. Okay, shout out Leeds United. I think I heard you say once that your mum was from Northern Ireland. Did you ever spend any time there growing up? Well, Jaffa Cake, double XL. I did. I used to go up to Killalay, near Downpatrick. Quite a lot. Got a lot of family in Northern Ireland, yeah. Uh, and I'll be there for Tales from the Octagon, Belfast, coming up later this year. Hopefully get to see all my family there as well. Um, so yeah, not, not, not too much time, but I definitely, we went out there, you know, several times to go see family and stuff like that. A lot of cousins, aunts, uncles, all the rest of it. So yeah, Jaffa Cake, hope you're well, buddy. Uh, the poll results, what are the poll results saying? Ooh, overwhelming, 
overwhelming percentage at 48 says you believe Conor McGregor has reached the final chapter. Final chapter might be a little bit doom and gloom, but he's probably, he's probably getting close. I don't mean to retiring. He can go on forever. He's, he'll always be a draw. He'll always have a fan base. But I just mean competing at the very, very top highest level. You know, th there's no shame in that. Mike, when you believe, you meme. When's the Believe You Meme review coming? I don't know what you meme. Uh, just bet $1,000 on Yuri Prohaska to bleed Glover to share it. Never been so confident in a bet before. Big fan of the ch channel. I'm a Brazilian living in Phoenix, Arizona. Well, Boha! And you're a Brazilian and you're betting against Glover to share it. Sacrilege. Uh, what did they call it? Anti patriotism. What did they call it? What did they call it? I don't know, but you're ashamed to Brazil. Go down there, have a word with fucking Bolsonaro and tell him to stop chopping down the rainforest, you dickhead. Um, but still, other than that, and put a poll up. Do we think, who do we think wins? Who do we think wins? Glover Teixeira, Yuri Prohaska. Fascinating fight. Fascinating fight. Can't wait for that one. What type of food and wine do I dine with Rebecca to make? Bro, I'm not reading out the rest of that because that's rude. But a type of wine, we don't drink fancy wine. We do like wine. We drink a little bit. Um, what type of wine? We like a bit of this. There's one recently we just got into. I think it's Kith and Kin. Kith and Kin. Let's have a look. No, well, let's not have a look. But let's have a look at the news stories. Should we see what's going on in the news? The world of MMA? Um, let's have a look. So, there's Conor McGregor, says his story's just starting. Frank Yeager makes stand-up debut. See what I'm saying? We're all doing it. Uh, Frank Yeager makes stand-up debut, compares the experience to MMA. Yeah, so what he's talking about there, Frank Yeager, good friend. You may know the guy Adam Hunter. He, uh, he does this um, UFC comedy jam, I think it's called, and he gets a few people to go up and, um, you know, they do, do a little mini stand-up set. They just did it recently. Frank Yeager, Sarah McMahon, Adam Hunter, there's a few others I'm forgetting. So fair play to them, because it's not easy. It's not easy. And what I did, to be honest, when I did Tales from the Octagon, I'm not being a stand-up comedian. I'm not, but it's kind of like that, because you're standing on a stage by yourself. But uh, I just talk about my fight career, but I do it in an entertaining way. I try to anyway. So if you want to come and see me make a dick out of myself and have a great time, Tales from the Octagon, the link is at the top of the chat. Tickets are going fast, and we've got meet and greets, we've got VIPs, we got merch, we got a lot of stuff, but we also got results to the poll, which is surprising to me, because 51% of you have Yuri Prohaska winning that fight. You know, which I get, I understand. Yuri Prohaska is a phenomenal fighter. He's an absolute goddamn beast. Um, but I feel like, what's his face? Glover Teixeira has been a little bit overlooked here, a little bit underappreciated. You know, you got to remember, Glover's been around a long time, and maybe that's why you're overlooking him. Michael Bisping and Anthony Smith react to MMA memes. Would be super fun to watch. Well, it would, but where do I see the MMA memes? I will, I will react. Got a favourite hotel to stay at? You should check out the Fairmont Grand Del Mar in San Diego. Ah, yes, San Diego. A whale's vagina. Sorry, it's a very old line. Um, favorite hotel? Well, I'll be going to Singapore next week, and I'm staying at the uh, the Mandarin Oriental in Singapore. And apparently, it's one of the four most luxury hotels in the world. So I'm very much looking forward to that one. The Four Seasons in Hong Kong. Oh my God! When I fought Kung Lee, when I fought Kung Lee, I stayed at the Four Seasons in Hong Kong, and. My God, that place was unbelievable. Unbelievable, so, so probably that one right now. Who wins in a street fight, Liam or Noel Gallagher? Well, that's not even a question. I believe Liam Gallagher would beat the crap out of Noel, you know? I think that's obvious. I think everyone knows this. Bisping and Andy Smith reacting to the memes, we did that. What type of food do I wine and dine Rebecca with? Uh, yeah, Kith and Kin. I do like a bit of Kith and Kin on the, uh, on the wine choice. Let's have a look. It's not expensive, not expensive at all. Kith and Kin wine. See what it comes up with. See if it even comes up. There it is, 35 quid, dollars. Try to check it out, Kith and Kin. Mm, mwah. 
Delicioso. But uh, um, this is a very nice wine. I don't know why I'm talking like a Bora, but it's nice. Don't know why I'm talking like Bora. Anyway, let's go back to the MMA news. Uh, Karate Sensei tried to win a fight after training for just a month. Huh. Should we have a look at this? Probably not. Probably not. Conor McGregor is just beginning. Pudzianowski leaves scary KO. Ooh, Michael Mattel are down for several minutes. Oof. I mean, listen, the problem is when you're, you're the world's strongest man or former, you're going to pack a punch. Now, listen, I know what you're saying. Oh, but still, punching power is technique. It is. It is. But if you combine the technique with being the world's strongest man, believe it or not, you're going to hit a little bit harder than the average guy. Uh, you Should we watch the video? Should we see if there's a video? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Hold on. Hold on. Let's have a look. Oh, Pudgy. Pudgy Nalski. Hold on. Oh. Oh. He's a big fella. What's Luke Thomas doing there? Anyway, anyway, yeah, Mario Pudzianowski. Very, very strong man. Hello, babe. The people are waiting for you. We got a new member, guys. Whoa! Duane Crochet, the Crochet boss. Shout out, you are a conceiver. Hey, champ, do you see your old mate Romero wired Polizzi's jaw? I didn't know what Sir uh, Yoel Romero been up to these days. Let's have a look. Should we check it out? Should we see? Should we see? Yoel. Well, what, has he been beating people again? I'm not surprised. Yoel Romero's a freak. It pisses me off. People always say I ducked him. I did not duck him. That is one thing that annoys me. Uh, Alex Polisi shows x-ray of apparently broken jaw. Brutal knockout. Oof. Should we have a look at it? Yeah, let's have a look at that for sure. MMA fighting. Let's have a look. I mean, that is the problem with mixed martial arts. It's a vicious sport. But where's the x-ray? There it is. Ooh, look at that. There it is. Right in the... This part here, oh, that's bad. And is that another one at the top, at the back as well? I think it's broken in two places, but holy shit. My God. And hey, and here's the thing, you know, because a lot of people say that Luke Rockhold can't take a punch and they cite the knockout to Yoel Romero. Yoel Romero can literally smash a jaw in several places. They talk about the knockout to Jan Blachowicz, Mr. Polish Power himself. And of course, there was a left hook Larry that knocked him out as well. But come on, the power's legendary. We know this. But in all jokes aside, that is fucking insane. Look at that. I mean, he's a scary man. Doesn't mean I ducked him, you bastards. All right, let's have a look at these chats here. What have we got? Yeah, I just did that one on the Yoel Romero. So let's go back to the MMA news and see what we got. This is interesting. I like doing this. Because you never know where it's going to end up. You never know what's going to pop up. Um, so, fly off to uh, Singapore next week. 20-hour flight. It's a bit of a nightmare. But still, not a lot coming up. It's all, I've got Yoel Romero in the bloody thing. That's why. I'm like, why is it all about Yoel Romero? Okay, with confusion and debates on MMA judging, UFC commentary teams are part of the problem. What? Bloody elbow. Shut up. All right, we're going to have to have a look at this one. Because, like, oh, UFC commentary team are part of the problem. I mean, to be fair, in the picture, it's Joe Rogan, John Anakin, DC. No mention of me yet. Let's click on it and see what these dickheads... Bloody elbow. Bloody elbow. Or, or any of these magazines criticise or uh, websites. They just criticise. They criticise the fighters. They criticise the UFC. They criticise the commentators. Anything they can do. But let's criticise their fucking work, shall we? Let's have a look. Let's see who wrote this for one. As long as it's someone... Oh, Trent Rainsmith. Hey, Trent, go fuck yourself. How about that? The UFC commentary team are part of the problem. Oh, really? They're also part of the reason why you enjoy it so much. 
Joe Rogan has been a legendary commentator for years. DC brings such warmth and expertise and knowledge to the game. John Anik is the best play-by-play guy in all of sports and the knowledge and the passion, more importantly, that he has for the sport of mixed martial arts is second to none. You want to see him when he's delivering these lines, when he's talking, the man is so animated, he's so pumped up. So they are part of the reason you enjoy the sport so much. But of course, yeah, let's talk shit about them. Say they are part of the problem. Dickheads. All right, let's have a look. So some of the loudest critics... Hold on, let's move it down a little bit. Some of the loudest critics of MMA judging are the UFC commentators. Well, yeah, because when we see a, a, a fight judged wrongly, we call it, we say it like we see. Just this week, Daniel Cormier and Don, Dominic Cruz offered their opinions with Cormier stating that the judges are tasked to score UFC fights, keep on making these mistakes. The problem with Cormier's view on this is that he and his cohorts on the commentary desk don't seem to have a complete grasp on the scoring criteria. That's not great, considering viewers often take their cues from the commentary team. With that, there is a trickle-down effect of wrongness. Okay, granted, you know, if, if we are, or DC, DC, making mistakes, um, that's a fair point. What makes things worse is there's been incidents where the UFC commentators, especially Dominic Cruz, have been proudly, loudly, and confidently wrong in informing those who watch and listen to them on UFC broadcasts. Well, we're all human beings. Trent fucking missed the perfect Rainsmith. And when you're doing live TV for seven hours, you might make a slight little mistake here and there. Oh, but I guess you've never made a mistake in your life, have you, Trent? Uh, what follows are some of the most recent instances where the UFC commentators either displayed their ignorance on the MMA scoring criteria or just plain got things wrong. Well, first of all, on that, Mr. Trent fucking perfect, Rain Smith, it's not our job to, uh, to score the fights. And the UFC don't really want us doing that anyway. Our job is to call the action, talk about what the fight is, as, as color commentators, talk about what fighter A can do better. Maybe fighter B needs to get back to his feet, talk about what they're going through, talk about what this position feels like. And there's no better person to do it, Trent Dickhead Smith, then DC, Dominic Cruz, myself, because we've been there. Paul Felder, of course. We've been there. We've done it. We've got the T-shirt and we've come out the other side with a ton of experience and insight that you could never even begin to fucking understand. But sure, go ahead. Write a shitty article. Now, none of this to say that there should not be a legitimate criticism of judging in MMA. <laughs> uh, but when that criticism comes from an opinion on the judging criteria that doesn't coincide with how the criteria is written, then that's when there's a problem with that criticism. To often the loudest voices come from an incorrect starting point. UFC Vegas, hold on, let's just go down. In his criticism of the Hollywood versus Ketlin uh, Vieira fight, Cormier, who's a Hall of Famer, said Ketlin Vieira does not want to be against the side of the octagon by being held, held there by Holly Holm. Regardless of what you think in terms of the damage, she doesn't want to be there. Well, I disagree with Cormier on that one, but, you know, potato, potato. And then he goes on, he's quoting the fucking criteria. Oh, fuck off. They just want to criticise all the time. You're a bell end, Trent Rainsmith. You're a bell end. That's about it. How about write something positive? How about say, wow, once again, what an amazing event at the weekend. Hats off to these fighters. The commentators do a great team. I bet you've never, ever written such an article in your life because it's more fun to be a hater. It's more fun to get clicks and sit there. Should we have a look at Trent Rainsmith and see what he looks like? Old Trent. I'm going to bully him now. Sorry. Uh, uh, politically correct world. <laughs> I'm like, is that, I just got a text. I'm like, is that Ant Evans in the background going, no, don't bully Trent Rainsmith. Rebecca, yeah. we need you because I'm bullying Trent Rainsmith. I mean, look at him. Look at him, Trent Rainsmith. What a bell end. Just continue with your little negative thoughts. I don't need to say anything because you're already saying it and you're thinking it for me. Anyway, we've got charts. Let's go back to the charts. Bispin, you have fought ball for these men. I always wanted to ask you who's the better fighter, GSP, George St. Pierre. Very, very good question. Very difficult to answer, purely subjective. You want to come and join the party, babe? Sure. All right, thank God. Rebecca's coming. The better half. Um, G G Rebecca, George St. Pierre or George, uh, uh, George St. Pierre or Anderson Silva? Uh, 
in what regard? Who would win in a fight? Who's the better martial artist? Um, who? GSP and Silver. GSP and Silver. Um, right now? MMA guy wants to know. No, next week, Ben. Next week. No, but like, um, just straight to know. You, you, you're always. Dude, let me get in. You're always like on an angle. I know. I'm not in. Shut up. We're bickering already. Please, no you. bickering. No bickering on this one. Okay, we'll be nice to each other. You need to move over a little. I bit. can't move okay, over okay, anymore because I'm manning up the poles. Uh, Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva. I disagree. I actually think it's um, probably George St. Pierre because he's a more well-rounded threat. He's got the takedowns. He's got good striking. Not as good as Anderson's, but he's got a more well-rounded attack game. I don't know why you're saying this. Why? Because GSP beat you. GSP didn't beat me. GSP got f very, very lucky, right? Nine times out of ten, I win that fight. He just beat me on that one out of ten. Just that one time you were fought him. Yeah, exactly. That's annoying, isn't it? It's very annoying how that works. No. I'd beat him nine times out of ten. Just that one time out of ten. That one lucky. time out of ten is when we did it in Madison Square Garden. So annoying. The other nine, no one saw. You would have killed him. Would have wiped the floor with him. <laughs> Who wins, Liam or Noel? We did that one. If you'd stayed at light heavy, what strategy would you have looked for against John Jones? I don't know about that. What strategy, babe? Would we have done against John Jones? Would you have done against John Jones? All right. Um, um, I'd have closed the distance. I'd have tried to defend takedowns. Uh, the rolling out comps, the last one for sure. I don't know what you're saying, Ant. I'm, I'm on a live, Ant. You're texting me on a live. I need. It must be important, guys. My producer that's running the polls is. Oh, it's, it's on the group text. It's on the group text. Anyway, right, Rebecca, there's John Jones. I don't know. I would have, I would have outboxed him. Boom, there we go. <laughs> We're going to go see Top Gun 2 tonight, babe. She's not interested. Why aren't you interested? I just don't like going to the movies she in doesn't... general. Why? It's so boring. Not if it's a good film. It grosses me out. I don't want to sit there on a chair that, like... Thousands of people have sat on and everything I touch is like gross and I just don't, I don't know, and I'm always freezing. It's always it, so it, cold. Well, you can bring a jacket. Thanks. You can bring a jacket. Uh, and, and, and is uh, Rebecca, where is Mike taking you for dinner or what type of food? Are you excited for the cinema? Well, you just said you're not excited. Not excited. But hold on, but hold on. Listen, you, so you think everything's gross. Is that because of COVID and now it's like a no, heightened your... No, it's just everything's like... People have been eating and popcorn flying everywhere and drinks being spilled. Like, it's disgusting. It's stinks. I don't like it. I'm just being honest. You love it. I don't, I, you, loves the, loves the cinema. I do. I love to watch a good movie. You know why? Because these massive studios spend hundreds of millions making these movies for our entertainment. How long is Top Gun 2? Don't tell me it's two hours. If it's two hours, I'm not going. Well, we're going regardless of... Oh, my God! Beb, two hours, 17 minutes. It's not necessary for a movie to be that long. And put a poll up. Is it necessary for a movie to be that long? <laughs> I don't want to and, sit there for and two listen, hours, And listen, minutes. listen. All right, never mind Top Gun. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. And Anthony Evans, who runs the polls, he's a comic book guy. He's a comic book nerd. Oh, babe, we've got a new member. Woo! Yeah. Thank you. Joni, you are a conceiver. What's next, babe? Where am I taking you for dinner? It's a black coffee. Oh, it stinks. It's black. I know. I'm a real man now. <laughs> but I, uh, haven't I told you to put no cream in? You've told me, yes. I just keep forgetting. <laughs> Sorry. She's trying to fatten me up. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, so the movie's two hours, 17 minutes long. Oh, has anybody seen The Batman? The new Batman with Robert Pattinson in. Have we seen that? Let me know in the chat. Let us know. We have opinions. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. Do you make that ginger shot you always make? Also, yes. has anyone ever tried to hit on you in front of Michael? I don't believe they have. I have they? I don't know. She makes the ginger and turmeric shots. Yes, correct. I do. I have ginger, turmeric and lemon. Um, juice all that together. I don't peel the lemons. Um, and then you add pepper at the end. And I decant it in these nice little shot glasses. It's very nice. You and like that's it. what you're here for. 
that's what you want to hear. But in all seriousness, it is very good. It's very healthy. And it's helps with inflammation. Um, Safe Saoud, legendary coach of Fortis MMA. When I had my first knee replacement, it was so kind, wasn't it, Beck? Mm-hmm. He sent through this huge box of supplements and anti uh, anti, anti. Uh, <laughs> I, I know I live in America I say anti instead of anti anti uh, inflation uh, inflammation inflation, <laughs> inflammation products and stuff like that uh, so yes yeah, so shout out Safe Saud and ever since then we've been doing the ginger and turmeric shots no I used to do it before that you didn't that's yes, when we started no. let's put a poll up uh, is it necessary for the movie to be two hours over two hours long yes 55% well, right. you 55% people must have more time on your hands than me because I don't want to sit there for um, All right, so I've got rid of that poll. Put another poll up. Has anybody seen The Batman with Robert Pattinson? Uh, did you like it? Yes or no? Could you get through it? I turned it up. We turned it off, didn't we? We literally turned it off. We couldn't take it anymore. That is over three hours long. Right, and it is so long, and the shots are just like it's really drawn out and like long slow mo's. It's trying to be a masterpiece in every single little shot. It's so dark and gloomy and like, but, tra- not, but not in an atmospheric way. No, they've, they've just got it wrong. And um, I did not. I like Robert Pattinson, but I did not enjoy him as Batman. Why? He just did not have that presence. There's some, say what you said to me in private. Lacking. What did I say? You said he wasn't masculine enough. Well, yeah, no, he's not. He just lacks masculinity. You need to ooze masculinity to be Batman. Well, you do. He doesn't. Well, you do. In this day and age, it's almost wrong to say that, and it shouldn't be, because Batman is... He's a superhero. It's not real, guys. He's a superhero, (laughs) correct, but he's a superhero that doesn't really have powers. Batman, essentially, is just hard as fuck. Do you know what I mean? And he's a billionaire, and he's really smart, and he's got access to all that crazy technology... And, you know, I don't know, fucking Alfred, he must have some scientists or shit in the background making the Batmobiles and stuff. Mm. But when he's a billionaire. He's got, what's it called? Wayne Enterprises or whatever. What's it called? Wayne Stocks? I don't know. Whatever. Stark? I don't know. That's, that's Iron Man, Stark, man. Oh. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> you can write down what I know. I know more about football than what I do about fucking superhero stuff. And Evans is losing his mind right now. <laughs> but, but, but... Robert Patterson is not masculine enough. He just doesn't look like it. He looks like a petulant child, a petulant teenager in most of the scenes. Batman can't fly. He can't shoot lasers, okay? He's just proper well hard. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's okay to cast someone that looks proper well hard. Because so, I don't buy Robert Pattinson taking out 10 people at once just, with just... Pa, 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 pa. That's not even the reason, though, that I, I didn't enjoy it. I just didn't... I don't know. So who's your favourite Batman? Without a doubt, Christian Bale. Without a shadow of a doubt. Michael yeah. Keaton was pretty good, though. He was very good. We liked a bit of Michael Kiki. Wasn't Beth Ben Affleck? Um, ben Affleck, yeah. I didn't see those ones. Yeah, he, I he, can't imagine. He was all right. He was all right. Yeah. He was all right. He was all right. And um, put a poll up about the Batman. That's what I want to see. Never mind the long, the long bloody, the long... Oh, did I just kill the poll? I think I did. Anyway. It's rude. So Batman was annoying. Is it something wrong with your good eye? You keep touching it every five seconds. Nah, there's nothing wrong. I've got astigmatism, so my, my, my eyes are a weird shape, so my contact lens moves. And when you have two eyes, if one contact lens moves, you don't notice because your other eye compensates. And generally, the optician and the eye specialist said, the opt- ophthalmologist, don't you know, uh, they're always moving. Contacts are often moving a little bit. But one overcompensates for the other one. I only have one eye. So when it happens, everything goes blurry. So I've just got to give it a little shoo and slide it back into place. Only problem is bacteria on the end of the fingertips. You know what I'm saying? Driving through the desert late at night. Because sometimes it's a, you don't remember. Does it have to go left or right? Because sometimes I put it on inside out. And it's a 50-50 because it's all blurry. Right? And if you, go, if you go the wrong way, it gets blurry which can be an issue a big issue when you're driving at night with no eyes no eyes <laughs> essentially that's what's happening um, put a poll up about the Batman I know you did and I got rid of it I apologise should we have a look at the MMA world how many no. coordinating Cejudos do you think it would take to beat Francis Ngannou <laughs> how many Sarah Henry yes, Cejudos I understand the question um... that's funny <laughs> uh, a lot 
No. You, five. No, yeah, five, I reckon. Five. I reckon because one Tahudo each could go for the legs. <laughs> you know what I mean? You've got a Henry on each leg, right? <laughs> the Henry. What move is that, the Henry? What's it called? Have you ever, oh, it's a Henry. I never heard that. The drugs. Dude, the light's not on us very well. Well, go and turn it. I will. The Henry. <laughs> Movie reference. The Henry, what is it? It's that one. Get him to the Greek. Everyone loves a Henry. Old Henry. What does uh, that mean? Is, is, isn't it not get him to the Greek with, uh, what's he called? You know, the English dude. Russell Brand. Russell Brand. He's funny. He's, he's funny in that. He is funny. He is funny. All right, let's have a look. The best bail. Yeah, I know, and we're not asking about the best Batman because the best Batman without a shadow of a doubt is Christian we're Bale. We're asking about, no, this is a very good poll. Look. What? Oh, he's listed. The, the best Batman? Yeah. Uh, Bale, yeah, Addison, ba ba Keaton. I know that. I, I want to know their thoughts on the movie, The Batman. We know Christian Bale. I don't need a poll for that. I apologise, Ant. I don't need a fucking poll to know That's that Christian the Bale's that the best Batman. Best Batman by far is Christian Bale. Everyone else can go fuck themselves. They don't come close. They don't even come anywhere remotely close. I remember watching Batman Begins. We were together. And I was like, oh my God, this movie is amazing. Everything else sucks. Uh, so Ant put a poll up. What do we think of the Batman? Is something wrong with your good eye? Rebecca, would you like to read a question out? Um, hey, Michael and Rebecca, you two are fantastic and it's the best MMA show out there. So tell me how hard did you laugh at Gringo Puppy? How did you, well, first of all, how hard did you laugh at Gringo Puppy? I didn't laugh per se. I chuckled. Why not? I laughed to myself inside. There was a couple of jokes like, you know, Mexican cookies are chocolate chips with salsa on. It's hilarious. There was some stuff, but I'm just not... I'm just not a loller. I'm not a laugh out type louder. <laughs> You're not a laugh. You're not a <laughs> laugh out type. What? I'm not a loller. You're famous for your laugh. I'm not famous for my laugh. I'm famous for being ultra smart. You're famous for you. You know laugh. what I mean? People are like, that's, that's the one thing about Bisping. He's really smart. Old Henry. Babe, what should we look up? Come on, give me something. It Amber was... Heard and Johnny Depp. Who wins the trial? Jesus, who wins that? We all know. Come on, come on. Come on. And do not put a poll. No, up. we got to put a poll up. What do we think? What do we think on that one? No. What do we think? Amber Heard, Johnny Depp, six week trials all come to the end. I don't know if you've been watching it, Rebecca. I have. She was glued to it. Dude, that's not nice. What? You're pointing at me. With I said she was glued to it. Just like that. I wasn't being rude. It's like <laughs> referencing. You're literally you. taking me eye out. I've got no depth for I know, that's why I'm scared. <laughs> uh, she was glued to it though, weren't you, babe? I was quite glued on some days, yes. She was it glued. was very interesting. Uh, Mike is 20 years too old to start MMA and have a successful career. Been thinking about joining City Kickboxing here Ooh. in New Zealand. No way. Not no too way. old. 20 years old, you are a child. No you're offense, <laughs> but yes, you're a child. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no offense. I mean, you, you're it's a young. Good thing. You're a young man. You're in your absolute prime of life. Well, you're yet to reach your prime, but in terms of being young and having energy to do stuff, and 20 years old, you're still a baby. No, please. And you've got city kit boxing right on your doorstep. You would be a fool not to take advantage of that uh, facility, that, that resource that you have at your doorstep. One of the best gyms in the world right now, producing great fighters. Uh, what's he called? What's he called? The head coach. Oh, uh, I forget him, he's got the beard, is, is his coach. I forget it, I forget it, but whatever, he's very good. Go there. Uh, so. Go there. Uh, second time, let's see if Mike deletes this one. Well, I'm sorry, Ant. What do we think of the Batman? Too long, too dark. Was a good attempt, was great. Well, what do you think, Ant? Oh my God, 33% said great. The overwhelming majority said great. That's crazy. Well, maybe we're out of touch. We're not, though. Maybe we are. Say something when I type. <laughs> well, I'm typing. We've got a two-man team. Darling. I know, but when I'm sure. typing... But this You're is being what... very aggressive today. You're being aggressive to everyone else, too. Wow. Is it just me? I mean, look at that. 4.0 out of 5, though. Yeah. Mm, let's don't agree. Disagree. Agree to disagree. But generally, babe, from now on, here's the golden rule. 
when I go deep into technicalities, when I'm like being my computer whiz that I am, you know, cracking codes and hacking into stuff doing here, you got to tell stories and anecdotes. I will never tell stories and anecdotes. Okay. Um, <laughs> the Batman is fantastic. These people are out of the mind. I just want a one star. Just give me a one star. Just give me a one. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God, we were wrong, babe. How does it feel? Oh, there we go. We got a wanna. Just awful. We got a wanna. Okay, let's move on from the. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We're, mo Batman. we're moving on. We got a new member. <laughs> Woo! Thank o you. Odashina Canal. All right, so we're doing a video next week and crazy martial arts that actually exist. Yeah, so keep an eye out for that one. Next week we'll be back. We need Team One Eye merch. Team One Eye? Team One Eye. Put a poll up on. Would you buy that? We've got Left Up Larry and we've got Team One Eye. Who wins Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial? We have a poll up there right now. Let us know what mm -hmm. you think. Beck, what do you think? Depp. Why do you think Johnny Depp? Because she's lying. Do you think she's and lying? And she's proven, been proven to be lying like on every occasion. I'm not even going to say several occasions. On every occasion, it's been proven that she's lying. So for that reason, she will not win. Yeah. I mean, she, it did, it, she did kind of Photoshop that picture. She did. Yeah, she did get made a fool. And she never donated the $7 million. Yeah, this is what you came here for. Legal analysis. Uh, we got a question. Mike, Rebecca, Mike is being aggressive. He already gave someone See? a finger and threatened to lose his temper. That's not nice. Did you give someone the finger and threaten to lose your temper? I might have been going to scratch my eye or something. You, you are, know. you're being kind of not nice. Rebecca, you're being not nice by saying that I'm not being nice <laughs> on a live. Other people are saying it too. It's very hot in here. Oh God, he's flapping his <laughs> t-shirt. That's not a good sign, guys. Oh, I, that means he's stressed. Touch my forehead. I don't want it's, to. It's it, clammy. It's, no, it's more than just seriously touch my forehead. Give me your hands. Get ready. It's moist. It's very moist. Is that or you're just greasy? I'm not greasy, babe. <laughs> to wipe it. William Barrios is shit stirring now, saying that I'm being aggressive. Well... I'm not being aggressive. I'll put the AC on. Will that calm you down? I've already got it on. No, I turned it up. Oh, she turned it... <laughs> no wonder I'm sweating! See, See what this is what she does! I turned it to 72. Yeah, but it was on 72. The temperature was 72, so I turned it to 70. Cause it, you cause turned I, it to 71. Yeah, and I'm sweating. I turned it down a degree. Even, even, even the stick man's having a bad do. The stick man needs an umbrella because it's pissing it down it's up on, there. All right, it's on 71 now. It's Put it freezing. To, set it to 70. Ooh. You may get yourself a shawl. Uh, Johnny Depp, Amber Heard trial. The results are in. 72% Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. That crazy lady, 6%. We all won. Mm -hmm. It was effing hilarious. She was glued to it. Her and my daughter. Yes, but, you, you enjoyed it as well. No, I did, I did. Not as much as you, though, if I'm honest. No offence. Um, all right, Mike, you seen the Joaquin Buckley video response to Chael and Darren Till situation? He also made it seem like Hamza was scared. Huh. I, I haven't seen that. No, mate. I haven't, but I will. I, w I would like to see it. We go. I think we've got a new member. Oh, no. Odishaya Kamal. Welcome to the club. Rebecca, Mike's been aggressive, yeah. Bisping for the next James Bond. You got the British swag and we all know you can fight. You would make a good choice next to Idris Elba. What do you think, Nev? <laughs> Are they being serious? Why wouldn't they be serious? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Say it. I'm not saying anything. I was just I'm wondering if they're being serious. They're being serious. You'd make a wonderful James Bond, of course. She's being sarcastic. No. no, you are. But why wouldn't I make a good James I'm Bond? I'm not saying you wouldn't. You're saying I'm not suave enough. You're saying I'm not gentlemanly enough. Correct. You're saying I'm not. <laughs> you're saying I'm not sophisticated enough. No, but you have to. You, you're, you're acting, so you, it's fine. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. I don't have to be James Bond. No, you don't. Can you see it in your sights, Mrs. Moneypenny? I can't see no significant problems. It's a little, <laughs> it's a little, little, little uh, Sean Connery for you there. Lovely. Can you see it in your sights, Mrs. Moneypenny? Doesn't sound like it at all. Anyway, oh, new member. New member in the house. Have to you watched... media. Oh. Go on, babe. I was going to say, have you watched Stranger Things season four? No. We started to watch Stranger Things and then I've, it kind of 
lost its way a bit and we kind of tuned out so we haven't revisited it yet but mate it's meant to be very good so maybe we should try it again yeah yeah no no, no. we did watch it lucas would like it no he did we no I, he, we he saw a couple of episodes and he was mm -hmm. really into it uh oh by the way like lucas last night got us watching indiana jones and the temple of doom what a great movie that is. You forget yeah. how good those early Indiana Jones movies are, which led us to a discussion of, oh, they don't make them like they used to, which is how this whole Top Gun thing came up. And I said, well, let's go watch Top Gun because we sit here and slagging out, you know, talking crap about movies, but we don't really watch too many of them. I don't watch movies really, no. No. All right, we've got a few chats here. Let's go down the bottom here. The grabbing and twisting of Becca was a bit much. You were straight up aggressive as soon as I walked in. You're like, straighten up. And I'm like, I haven't sat down properly. Well, I apologize. Well, the you? eyeball could be in fashion if too many interesting spy gadgets. Classic, speak to my bisping. Am I balding? No, I'm not balding. Do I look like I'm balding? <laughs> Am I balding? No, no you're actually not. Even though I, I joke around to say his hairline is... Don't recently. touch it! <laughs> Get off! He's not. It's fine. I'm not balding. Hello, best been greetings from New Zealand. Do I watch the NRL? What's that, New Zealand Rugby League? So who would you like to see in the UFC? NRL? What's the NRL? National Rugby League? National Rugby League. Oh, because you said greetings from New Zealand. You threw me off. Do you know what? I don't. I do enjoy rugby. Used to play it. It was a flanker. I was very effective as a flanker, babe. Were you? I was always known for being a... Because you're aggressive. That's why. I was... Oh, why were you a good flanker, then? I've always been known for my flanking abilities. Why were you a good flanker? Because I was fast, athletic, agile. Aggressive. You know, not afraid to get amongst it. You know what I mean? Whoa! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Turn that down! Who's that? Look, <laughs> look, no, 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 this is who it is. The Brazilian. She's not Brazilian. It says the Brazilian. Who the fuck is the Brazilian when she's at home? It, oh, it better be a woman. <laughs> so, who is it? It's the Brazilian. It's a, it's a little, uh, you know, the Brazilian. <laughs> uh, awesome seeing Mike in Triple Threat, but it was more awesome meeting you many years ago in Melbourne at the Fit Expo. Well, thank you very much, Fauzi Mohammed. Appreciate you, buddy. Glad you liked Triple Threat. If you haven't seen that, everyone, check it out on Netflix. I was a little porky on that. I was a little fat. On Triple Threat? Yeah. Why? Because I was out. Because I, I remember I, I had to have knee surgery. Mm -hmm. My knee was bothering me. I couldn't really work out much. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you looked fat. Oh, I was fat. I was far, I was embarrassed because all these movie stars, you know, they're all in shape. They Scott are in Adkins, shape. I'm, yeah, they're in shape, and I was fat, and I was champion of the world. Hold on, Scott Adkins. Is it Adkins or Adkins? He's a good guy, by the way. What are you giggling? It's been very. Lucas will be starting kickboxing again. He does wrestling and jujitsu. Loves wrestling, doesn't he? He loves it. Loves it. Uh, however. However. He did say that he enjoys horse riding the most. Oh. Dude, I think, can we change this off the screen? See that bo bottom right? Uh, but this one, Oh, yeah. God, yeah, yeah. There's, 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 there's bad... Porn pornographic images. There's bad images. I'm just throwing it out there. You, you search Scott Adkins topless, it brings up a <laughs> lot of stuff. Fucking hell, shout out Scott, by the way. Mate, we're not talking shit. I hope you well. Um, no, Ellie wants to start kickboxing. I was very, very happy about that. Hmm. And I think it will help her because she's... She's an aspiring actress, I think I mentioned this. She studies very, very hard. I know that sounds, oh, she's an aspiring actress. She's doing everything she can. She's studying theatre at college. She's doing a, multiple online courses. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously there'll be a plan B and whatnot, but uh, yeah. She's it, doing horse riding. It's good she's to have a dream. Acting lessons. She's acting lessons, do... horse riding. Going to start kickboxing. I said, well, that'll do you good. It'll she's serve you well. danced her whole life. Yeah. Don't worry about what the haters say, Bisping. Sit up straight. You're a great husband. If Rebecca felt differently, she wouldn't be with me. Well, this is it, correct? Come here. <laughs> Come here. But you... Mm. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> see? I'm a nice guy. Yes. No, nobody wants to see me getting on here and like... Oh, hi, Rebecca. Yeah, but no one wants to see you be straight up mean. I'm not being mean. You were a little mean. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. Anyway. But that is true. I do. I, I've 
Yes. Yep. Uh, greetings from the Gold Coast. See you out there for uh, Tales from the Octagon. Will Rebecca, hold on, I'll just read it properly. Greetings from the Gold Coast. Looking forward to seeing you in November, Mike. With Rebecca being from Australia, have you ever considered living in Australia? Mm, we, of course, have considered living there. We hope to buy a place there at some point in the not too distant future. Um, whether we will live there full time is um, up for debate, but we certainly want to buy somewhere and um, spend a lot of time there. And um, if it was up to me, obviously we would live there full time, but the kids are settled here. So that ain't going to happen. Yeah, Sadly. it's a shame. Um, yeah, the, 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 I mean, we, we have a great life here in the States, we do. But um, we actually contemplated moving to Australia when I fought, I believe it was Vanderlei Silva or Jorge Rivera. It was um, Jorge. Jorge Rivera, yeah. yeah. So, so, so we moved around, because uh, uh, I did a bunch of seminars all over the country, but then we went, we looked at some places, didn't we? And we were legitimately looking and thinking of moving to the Gold Coast. That was one of the places that we considered. And um, the, the training situation just wasn't right, mm -hmm. you know, because, I mean, it's changed now. There's tremendous... You know, Australia as a nation is having, you know, a real good presence in the UFC. You've got Jamie Malarkey, you've got Jack Della Maddalena tied to Avasa, Israel Adesanya, I know he's New Zealand, Robert Whitaker, Alexander Volkanovsky, and the list goes on, many others as well. So, of course, lots of great places to train and training partners and all the rest of it. But back in 2011, wasn't quite the same situation. And I came to the conclusion that if we moved to Australia, then I would have to... You'd have to be away, like, a lot. I'd have to be doing training camps in America mm -hmm. or the UK a lot. And that's not what we were trying to do. So we came to Australia... Sorry, we came to America. We did. We did. Uh, this been ain't no James Bond, someone says. <gasps> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I just, yeah. Um, someone said, when was the last time you cried, Michael? The last time I cried? I know exactly when the last time I cried was. I know when it was too. It was a few days ago, after what happened in Texas. I just couldn't bear it. And then, then every time I bloody see it, it's bloody awful. I can't, you know, absolutely heartbreaking. But we're not here to talk about that right now because of mm -hmm. course that needs attention and all the rest of it. But we're here to have a little bit of fun which has kind of gone downhill at the moment now. But yeah, that's when I did. Now I did cry, but so what? Uh, roll it or tank? Don't understand. Mike doesn't realise yet. What are you reading? Right here. Oh. Scott Atkins got a piece on him. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael, can you tell us the OnlyFans story? There isn't one. Are you and Rebecca <laughs> residents kind of or citizens one. as you live in the full United States full time? We're permanent, legal permanent residents with a green card. Yeah, we're, we're not citizens. Would you like to hear the green card story? They don't want to hear the green card story. No, but it's not, it's not a green thing. card story. Listen, when I was younger, you know, I, I got arrested a couple of times just for scrapping. Nothing bad. Never been a criminal. Um, and anyway, but that's all a long time ago. We're talking over 20 years ago now. And when we applied for our green card... Um, the guy, the, the, the final part of the process for getting the green card is an interview. So we all go down, Rebecca and I and the three kids, I make sure we're all dressing really well. I say best behavior, the best manners, we want to put our best foot forward. We're going to present ourselves as a very, very nice family. And hopefully they don't watch us on the YouTube lives. Uh, so we get down there and it's all going very, very well. And then the guy that was interviewing, you know what he said to me? He said... Okay, I just want to let you know that I'm a fan of the sport, but I'm not a fan of you. And I was so mad because I had to buy because I couldn't say anything. You know, if I, if I get into an argument with the guy, I'm definitely not mm. gonna get a green card. So I had to just take that and bite my tongue. And then um, we kind of not got denied. He just they kept requesting more and more information, didn't they? More and more information. Which we'd already provided. Which we'd already provided. And then my lawyer said, he said, this guy is giving you the runaround. He said, none of this makes sense. None of it makes sense at all. And, and like another 18 months passed and we still didn't have it. And then guess what happened? My lawyer calls me up one day. He says, Mike, the guy that said that to you, the guy that said, I'm a fan of the sport, but not a fan of you. He's had an accident at work. 
he's fallen down some stairs and he's broken his legs and he's going to be in hospital for quite some time and your case has been assigned to another worker. They took one look at your case, granted your green card on the spot, it's in the mail. Should be with you in a few days. That's the story, guys. That's the story. <laughs> Don't talk shit because you're going to fall down the stairs. I'm trying to not talk shit on the guy, but fuck him. He got karma. He got karma. He wasn't nice. You're the man, Mike, started KMMA against a black belt. What's KMMA when it's at home? Had better punches, but he had better kicks. They said my punches were strong, but I'm loving it. Well, good luck with the journey, buddy. My greetings from Pennsylvania with UFC 275 coming up. Pretty soon, I'm rooting for Joanna to win against Whaley in the rematch. What do you think, babe? I can't give an impression. Joanna on Jacek, Whaley Zhang, Zhang Whaley actually. Incredible fight. Probably the best women's mixed martial arts fight we've ever seen. What do you think happens in the rematch? Oh, I think Joanna. Oh, really? Mm. Why? Because I just think she's going to win. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I don't know why. Damien says, I am a personal hero and an inspiration. See, that's what we're saying, babe. That's what people say. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, Mike, watch the Champions League final. Yeah, I, I, I did. It's finished. Uh, these comments are wild. I only watch when Rebecca's on. Well, that's offensive to me. <laughs> But complimentary to me. Thank yeah, but you. that's offensive. That's, no, it's not. It's offensive. A true lot of people say they, say they don't like it when I'm on here, so... Yeah, true. True or false, Bisping fights in 2022, Rebecca? No, false. False. Absolutely false. Uh, mm. Michael Bisping, who do you got? Javante Davis or Rolando Romero? Yeah, I'm not sure on that one, mate. I've been keeping up with Javante Tank Davis, so I'm not too sure right now. Um, seems like you maybe pushed that guy down the stairs. <laughs> oh, Jaffa Kate, double XL. No one's listening. I would have done if I was given half a goddamn chance. What a prick, though, to say that. Mike, please try to announce my name properly. You were way off earlier. Okay. <laughs> Udishaya Kanal. Udishaya Kanal. How do you think you say it, babe? Udishaya Kanal. Yeah. Udishaya Kanal. My banana kickboxing gym since COVID really want to start back, but anxiety of walking in. I know what you're saying. The anxiety mm -hmm. of walking in is getting to me. Trading with the guys who are miles better than me. Any advice? Oh, that's a good question. It is because one of the main things, one of the hardest things is walking into a new environment, especially when you've been away for a long time. Like, believe it or not, when I went back to jiu-jitsu recently, I went to a new place. Brady, my coach, he's coaching at a whole new place now. You know, so I've, I'd never been in there. Uh, I didn't know any of the people, you know, and things like that. And believe it or not, I had a little, not anxiety, but a little apprehension about going in because number one, you know, there's like a target on my back. Straight away, people are bisping, oh, let's see how good he is and all the rest of it. And it's just easy to not go in and not go through that. And the hardest point part, and I said this about Lucas, didn't I? Like Lucas started kickboxing mm -hmm. recently and I was so proud of him for doing just that because it's a hard thing to do to walk into a, any realm, right, babe? Oh, of course. Like when you started horse riding, yeah. were you a little nervous? Oh my gosh, yeah. You're going into a new realm, you don't know, uh, you, you know, you're a complete beginner, you don't know what to expect, you don't know what to make of the room, you know? Yeah, and all these things. Hardest part is walking in there, but when you go in, you realise you're worrying about nothing. So, Jamie McGregor, go and enjoy it, right? Because in your mind, you think it's a big thing. To anyone else, they're not, they don't they even don't know. Care. They won't. Probably won't even notice. Yeah. That's, <laughs> and then you'll regret it if you don't. They're just doing them. They're getting on with their lives. All they know is that they, when they're in the gym about to start the training session, an extra person walked in that maybe they've never seen before. But like, oh yeah, yeah, we've got a new guy. And they would have been new once. I'm sure they'll be um, sympathetic yeah. and friendly. Yeah, and... exactly. So Jamie, good luck, buddy. All the best, mate. Rebecca, trust me. I know character. You're lucky to have Michael. He's the effing man. He is the effing man, guys. I am very lucky to have him. Just not what you say. <laughs> what? Why? Rogan is on that horse tranquilizer. Rebecca and Mike, hello from Mary, oh, from Derry Island. 
Oh, hello. What three fights are we most looking forward to in 2022? Believe it or not, Glover Teixeira taking on Yuri Prohaska, Yuan Aeon J taking on Zhang Wei Li, and what's the other one at 275? There's another big one as well. But there we go. Rebecca, trust me, I just did that one. Did you see Top Gun 2? No. Claudio, you just joined the chat. We've been talking about this. We're going to go see it tonight, aren't we, babe? We are, apparently. Two hours, 17 minutes. Lad from Blackbird here, mate. Massive fan. Quick question. Apart from family and friends, what is the thing that you miss the most from England? Ooh, what do you miss the most from England, babe? Um, I miss the history. Yes. I miss walking around and looking at all the old buildings and just the feel of the history. We don't have that here, obviously. Um, yeah, I do. I, that's what I miss about England. Not the weather. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we miss family and friends. That obviously goes without saying. Um, Shut up, Harry. It's the car wash people. Oh, it's the car wash people are Not here. Not for us. Uh, yeah, yeah. The architecture. I mean, like you go to London, the the, the architecture is mind blowing. But not just we're not just talking all this grandiose stuff, palaces and all that shit. Because obviously, <laughs> we don't live in those. Uh, we're just talking about like you know, like the average cottage or a little yeah, terraced just go house Google and. Google Nelson Street, for example. Oh, this is where we used to live. Yeah, good one, babe. Oh, I wonder if it comes up. Well, it will come up. What sure am I will. saying? Nine Nelson Street, Clitheroe. Maybe you shouldn't give the actual legit address. Well, it's too late now. I'm gonna... <laughs> we don't live there. We don't live there. Someone we sold else. it. Sold it a long time ago. Uh, so, what is this? You just want like a street view. There you go. Street view. Yeah. Hold on, you got to click down here. So this was the first house that we ever bought together. Oh. There she is. Aww. Oh no, 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 that's yeah, not it. That, yeah. Where? Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's not it. Well, that's, that's, the, that's, the that's the other, other end. end. That's the other end. This bloody street view is giving me the runaround, so babe. You, to, you have to control it down here and do a full 360. Yeah, whatever. So whatever. Whatever, it's oh, pissing it's, me off now. But that, it looks it's like It's pissing that. me off. It's doing my head in. Doing my hidden. Yeah, just do images. That's what I was going to do. Not like your way. But what is this? This is not. Oh, there it is. That's our house. The one on the left. Oh, no, it's not. But anyway, anyway, there you go. Bought the house in 1999. We did. We did. 48,000 <laughs> pounds. Couldn't get jack shit for 48 grand these days, could you? My God. That makes us feel, oh, hey, Mike, thanks for shouting out my wife. Natalie Stillwell about the loss of her parents. Oh, I'm sorry again, Natalie. Made her day, much appreciated. Well, thank you, Natalie. I uh, hope you're well, you know. Uh, what else we got over here? Mr. Billing, just want to say thank you for all the years of entertainment. I don't know why I'm doing it down there. We'll do it here. We've got lots of chats, though. Your next and best role will be playing the villain Sabretooth in a rated R Wolverine movie or Kano in Mortal Kombat. Hire me, bro. You're hired. Yeah, um, I, I wanted to be Kano in Mortal Kombat. But I thought the guy, oh, sorry, darling. Sorry. The guy that played Kano did a fantastic job. I've had this. Was he the Australian guy? Yeah. Yeah, he was very good. Yeah, he was funny. You liked Mortal Kombat, didn't you? <laughs> I did for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, she hates. I don't like movies like that normally. I did, yeah. I did enjoy it. Uh, you're one of the greatest UFC legends ever. Oh, well, Gresham, 74. Thank you. That's very kind. Will I go on the piss in Ireland in October? What do you. Oh, I dare say you might. Yeah! Come on! Come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will. I will because I think I'll be there for a few days. Dublin, I believe, is 100% sold out. Or it was before we postponed it. So there might be a few tickets. And then, as I said, up in Belfast, I've got tons of family up there. And I'm going to fly my mum out as well. Oh, are you? Yeah. Of course, because I'm going to give tickets to all my family to come. Okay, that's And nice. I'd like my mum to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, and... But she probably won't go. She won't want to go to a UFC event in Ireland. It's not a UFC is. event. Oh, it's sorry. me on stage. Oh yeah. She won't want to. She see definitely it. won't want to go then. Exactly. <laughs> no, she doesn't get around too much, too well. Sorry. Yeah, it's a nice idea though. Definitely. Yeah. I just so I probably, know. I probably will go on the piss. Hmm? My girlfriend wants to get married. I want to hit the road on my bicycle, on my motorcycle. How often do I have a drink of beer at the house? Says Matty. <laughs> How often do you have a drink? Yeah. Would you answer the question? 
I have a, I, I don't drink a lot. But but how do, often? But I drink frequently. I do. Every, so, every night? Not every night, most nights. But we're talking a beer and a glass of wine. Yeah, yeah and there's absolutely so nothing. So do I, for that matter. And there's so nothing I wrong with talk. that. Interim title fight may push the Avis Figueredo out of the flyweight division. Huh, interesting. Should we click on that babe or no? No. Okay, she said no. <laughs> She's not interested. Let's go on news. See what's coming up there. We did that one on McGregor. Daniel Cormier, who Conor McGregor will fight in the UFC return. I saw him talking about um, Tony Ferguson. I think Tony Ferguson would be a great matchup. The, Conor that, McGregor should fight. Conor? Yeah, he should fight Nate Diaz. I've said that a million times. However, from what I'm hearing, Conor's not going to fight anytime soon and Diaz has to fight. So that's kind of what would be the fly in the ointment for that one. Um, it makes sense though. I'd love to see him and Diaz go at it a third time, but I don't think that's going to happen. I don't, I, I don't want to see that again. Well, why not? Because we've seen it twice. Yeah, but the one on one apiece. Yeah. Generally, when that happens, you want to yeah. see a rubber match. You true, know what I mean, babe? True, you want to, you want to, you want it to be closed out and have a definitive winner. I'd rather see Connor and Tony. Ferguson. Mm -hmm. It's a better fight for for Connor. That's for damn sure. Tony's hittable. You know, I, I, th I think I'd lean towards Connor in that fight. You never know. Hi, Mike and Rebecca. Good evening, Rebecca. Looking good as always. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, thank Michael, you. Michael, <laughs> I'm here. Quick question. Why is it whenever I see a red door, I want to paint it black? It's been listening to the Rolling Stones, clearly. Oh, really? Is that a line? Yeah. You're so smart. Well, am I correct? Someone told me. <laughs> Why would you? Why were the, Why are you asking that question though? Just to see if we've got the knowledge. Probably to see, and you do because you passed the, the test. Yeah. You've got the knowledge, Bisping. You're an even better podcaster than you were a fighter. Well, thank you. These lives are always a little off the cuff, a little crazy, a little manic. Me and Beck have some like little arguments, micro <laughs> arguments on our. Sorry, we apologise. We don't mean to. I know. I'm, we're not. We're le legit not meaning to. He's just. No, I know. We're not meaning to. Argumentative. I'm not argumentative. <laughs> uh, Mike, I recently dislocated my AC joint during weight or wrestling training. Are you familiar with the injury? I'm not. Do you think you'll be able to return at 100% AC joint? AC I, joint. No, I don't. I don't know that one. Never heard of it. AC joint. All right, Mike's right. Mike versus Connor. So Tony versus Connor in the polls, put that up. Should we have a look at the news in the world? See what's going on? No, please don't. It's too depressing. We don't want, this is why we do this. So we can like. She hates the news. I, I can't bear the news. Well, especially right now. I, I just don't watch it. I don't care. I will, ignorance is bliss at this point because it's just too upsetting. So I just don't watch the news. So that's Not why I've been watching Johnny Depp and Amber Heard because it's like, I don't want to watch the news. Well, no, of course, right now, you know, there's that story out of Texas, which we don't want to talk about at all because, and it is so depressing and so sad and so frustrating um, and heartbreaking. But other than that one, I do like to have a grasp of what's happening in the world and rightly or wrongly, I need to, I, I'd like to know what's going on over in the Ukraine because that's a messed up situation. You can't just bury your head in the sand and then all over the world. There's a big, big world out there. I like to be informed. I like to know what's happening. But she hates it. She hates it when I put the news on. Well, the idea is you put the news on for a quick catch up and then you kind of change it or get on with your day. But it's just on permanently in the house. It's not on. It's just adverts though. It's not on permanently. Poll results are in. 63% say Conor McGregor beats Tony Ferguson. And... Hmm. <sighs> Could you imagine the trash talk coming in for that fight though? That would be kind of fun. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Tony likes to trash talk, doesn't oh, he? he? Tony will talk some trash. Yeah. And he. I, and I believe Connor does too. Oh, Connor does <laughs> a little bit. And Connor, and then Tony used to be with Paradigm Sports Management. Connor still is, of course, he's a part owner. But Tony left, so there's that whole beef and that whole drama. Mm. Do you want to do me a favour, sweetie pie? Yeah. In fact, I'll do it. I'll do I'll it. I'll do it. You? No, you're by yourself. No, I'm right here. No, no, you stay there. No, no, no. No, baby, <laughs> can't both leave. Move over. You mean this you is just you? You're handling me. It's just you. Okay. Just you. Okay. What do I do? How do I get the the super chats? You just you just click on them and. Sure uh, but no news is good news. Correct. I will live in ignorance. 
because there's nothing we can do about it anyway at this point so correct I'm going to be back in one minute. I'm going to use the loo. So it's just Don't like, leave I'm me. I'm just going to use the toilet. You're writing solo, babe. All right, okay. I'm going to write solo. Position yourself to the center. Okay, yes. So. You're going to help me, though. i got to get to the bottom. No, just use the mouse on that one, babe. You scroll on it there. Scroll. Okay. you got to talk. I know. <laughs> you got to talk. Uh, okay. I was, oh no, this can't be good. Correct. This cannot be good. Rebecca Hot. Thank you. Um, okay. I can't read out a lot of these. I love you, Rebecca Bisping. I love you too, Ryan Elms. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> you're safe with us. Don't worry. Thank you. Uh, hello. Hello. Come. All right. What's your opinion on Depp versus Heard, Rebecca? We've talked about this. I think she is lying through her teeth and she should be quite ashamed of herself because unfortunately a lot of women do suffer domestic abuse and it is not something to lie about. And um, I, th I don't think Johnny did any of it. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure there was a lot of wrongs in the relationship, a lot of toxicity. Um, but I think she was lying. Uh, I love you, Rebecca. Please come to Canada. Josh Saunders. Um, I have been to Canada and I would love to go again. Michael and I have both been. However, it's extremely freezing, uh, which I'm not down with. Uh, why did you choose Bisping all those years ago? <laughs> Why did I choose Bisping all those years ago? That's a very good question, and I ask myself that quite a lot. Why did I choose you? Yeah, why did you? <laughs> why did you? You were okay. I was all right. To be fair, in Clitheroe, I was probably the best of a bad bunch. <laughs> she just picked what she could take. She's like, all right, I'll settle for him. Be honest. No, you were very special. If you could do it all over again. Would I choose you? Yeah. Of course I would. <laughs> You're a liar. Uh, <laughs> Juliana Pena versus Amanda Nunes. Very curious. I've said publicly multiple times, I think Amanda will win. But I spent some time the other night with uh, Juliana Pena. Uh, she's a very nice girl. We had dinner the other night. You might have saw it, in fact. Yeah, I don't... You had dinner with Juliana Pena? I did. I did. Should I have known about this? Uh, how do I do this? Bring up like Instagram and stuff, whatever. No, so we did a thing for the UFC. It'll be out on UFC Fight Pass soon. Uh, Amanda Noon, Amanda Nunes, Juliana Pena, Matt Serra, Forrest Griffin, Juliana, Forrest, Matt Serra, me, Rashad Evans, Rashad Evans, five of us. Five tough champions that went on to become UFC champions. Of course, there's Kamara Usman as well, but Usman being the pound for pound number one. Oh, oh no, 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 no. And we all coached it. That was it. Five tough winners that became tough coaches that also won the, the, the UFC gold. So that's what we did. We did this little thing the other night, like a round table discussion. We sat down, UFC uh, fed us some very, very nice food. Me and Matt Serra might have drank a little bit. We might have got a little tipsy woo towards the end. Forrest Griffin doesn't drink. Rashad <laughs> Evans doesn't drink. Juliana Payne is in training camp for Amanda Nunes. That was down to you and Matt. So it was down to me and Matt Serra to make this thing enjoyable. And we maybe, went for maybe it. Maybe they don't need alcohol to have fun and be funny. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Do you, but I you, don't. I know you don't. Let's all go crazy and send in a bunch of super chats while Mikey's gone. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you had dinner with five of the one hit wonders? Well, that's not nice, is it? Um, I'm perturbed. Right, Bisping, I would never leave the house if I were you. Wifey is a 10. Oh, thanks. You are a very beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. My great catching up with you at the strip club last week. <laughs> what you did? You're to, like, why are you reading what this you, one out? What you did to that dwarf stripper girl was a bit weird, though. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> shut up, you dickhead! That's a secret. Uh, Mike, please stop breaking people's legs. Um, Have you broken right. people's legs? No, I haven't broken. <laughs> oh, he's talking about the, the the guy at the immigration. All right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh dear. No, I want to just for inspiration to stuff to talk about. Unless you guys give me some stuff in the charts, I got to go to the news because go normally, normally chat. you throw up like lots of conversation points. Oh. But mine gets aggressive when he can't drink. The freezer and your wife isn't a ten. She's, She's an, an 11. eleven. Oh my god! Oh, Stop it, guys. Nobody wants to hear you. this. Yes, they, I do. <laughs> yeah, we just you. All right. Uh, what's good? What's going on in our lives right now? <laughs> um, what are we trying to do? Uh, what are we doing with our lives? <laughs> what are we doing with our lives? Uh, what are you doing with your life? Rebecca, are you a... Uh, oh, that's not nice. What, what, what? Mike, you versus Forrest at Prime, who wins? You know, um... I used to train with Forrest Griffin a little bit. My first fight, UFC 66. I've talked about this before. When I went out to Vegas, uh, my team never came with me, so I was riding solo. I had Christmas dinner in the Palace Station. I had Christmas dinner at the Palace Station buffet by myself. That was one of the most miserable days of my life. Mm. But anyway, but Forrest Griffin would come pick me up at the Palace Station sometimes in his little Scion, this little car that he was given. Yeah, great guy. Getting PTSD when Mike pulls up the web search. Mike catch a ding dong on the screen again. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, stop getting drunk. I don't get drunk. Well, you got drunk the last night. Not last night, sorry. I wasn't drunk. <laughs> the night before. Again, totally, just totally undermining me. But I didn't get drunk. I had a few glasses of wine and was a you little just tipsy. Said you got, you said it, not me. Yeah, but that's not drunk. That's just a, a few glasses of wine and just like, you know, a little, you know, a little jazz, a little having fun, a little buzz. It's a big like, difference. Yeah, between being actually drunk. Mm. Mike, when is Rebecca's UFC debut? It's going to be bloody in a minute if she's not careful. <laughs> Uh, my uh, Rebecca, greetings from Newfoundland. I'm sure it's beautiful in Newfoundland. Sounds like a beautiful place, Newfoundland. Where are you all going on vacation this year? Or holiday? Hold on, let's have a look at the poll. Would you buy Mike's micro brawler? Let me know about this. Have a look at that micro brawler. No offense to you, Clitheroe, Mike, but what was Rebecca doing in Clitheroe? Um, well, my parents are British and um, my dad was in the Australian Air Force for about you know, 20 odd years. Um, and then he decided to get a job with Cathay Pacific, which was based out of Manchester Airport. Um, so I'd seen as they're both um, British and um, my mum used to live near Clitheroe. So it just made sense to live somewhere near there. And um, that is where I met Michael. Yep, there it is. There it is. That's the story. It's not very exciting. What is this? Do you think this is like some kind of inappropriate trap? What? Have you heard about the Ligma outbreak in Africa? Scary stuff. Oh, I feel, I don't like it. I feel like that's a setup. Well, Ligma, li Ligma. Oh God. Am I messing up here, guys? I don't know, it says disease. <laughs> I think we're just really ignorant. Oh, right, Oh, it's yeah. true. <laughs> the ligma outbreak. Have you been affected by the recent ligma outbreak? What is ligma? I don't know. Oh, we've been... Have we been hurt? I don't know. What is ligma? <laughs> What's Ligma? Ligma basketball, oh, Ligma balls. I was gonna say Ligma. Yeah, I told you. Yeah. You guys are pathetic. That's a poor one, no offense. Ligma balls, oh God. It's like, um, these, these what, these nuts. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, really funny. Can you beat Jake Paul, Rebecca? No. <laughs> Is this the year that the UK bring it home FIFA World Cup 2022? What are you talking about? The World Cup was last year, which was, should have been 2020, but we had the pandemic, so it'll be 2024. Don't ask me. Yeah, no, it will be. They're not going to win anyway, they never do. Whoa! Pedro, you're wrong. It's in two years, mate. Next World Cup, let's have a look. It is. Talk for a second, babe. Um, they're not going to win. <laughs> and uh, when was the last time they won a World Cup? 1966. Well, there you go. Two World Wars, one World Cup. That's all you need to know. That's all we need to know.
I wish them all the best, but let's be real. November 21, all right, I'm wrong. But this is, <laughs> but this is the, uh, I know. You no, were so confident, no, babes. You no. were so confident in FIFA what you were saying. 2022? What the flippity bit, Bob? It's in Qatar. 2022. When was the last World Cup? Last year. It can't have been. It was meant, it was, it was a year late. It was, right. and, we, and we did very well. But it's every four years. So they're doing it in three? No, because it's 2022, babe. It's, uh, I, I, Whatever. Maybe, maybe I'm getting this wrong. I don't know. Let's move on. What does it feel like to be married to someone who'll divorce you within five years? Put this into your secret account. Well, that's not very nice, is it, babe? Who's going to divorce who? Am I going to divorce you or are you going to divorce me? Yeah, you're going to divorce me. Oh, what? When are, you, when are you folks coming back to Hawaii? Oh, We love Hawaii. I want to, but it's so expensive right now. We were really looking. We wanted to go this summer. Um, but prices are ridiculous. It's scandalous. It's ridiculous. It's scandalous. Like, we just couldn't do it. Like, we're, we're trying, you know, obviously I've worked hard in life and, you know, you know so financially we're secure. Um, so we're looking at nice places, but the, the cost for a week, it was coming in like 25,000. And we've stayed at these places before. For way less money. Not, so why would we stay there again and pay yeah. double? It just doesn't make sense. So, so we're going can on, I say where we're going? You can say where we're going. Oh, we're going to Cancun. Again. again. We went last year, but the it was exact nice. exact same hotel. Again. Yeah, we are. We are. That but was you. I wanted to try somewhere different. Yeah, I know. But whatever, whatever, whatever. How long have we been going for? 90 minutes. We'll do another 30 minutes and then we'll get out of here. Get out of town. Get on with our life. Uh, Michael, how did you ever convince a spectacular woman like Rebecca to marry me? She convinced me to marry her. It was the other way around. Did I? No. I must have missed that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm joking, babe. Sopranos bounce. Yes, mate. What's your favourite ever DJ gig? No idea. Can't remember most of them. But uh, <laughs> maybe the one when I was DJing at Monroe's and it was early doors in the morning and I was DJing on the decks and then all of a sudden, <laughs> the roof just caved in. Did it? And water just soaked me because it must have been pouring down with rain outside and this building, the nightclub, wasn't a very nice building. No, just it put... was a, well, basically it was just a warehouse. A it, was, it was a dump. It was warehouse. a dump. Oh, it was hideous. But anyway, but so obviously it was raining and the water was building and building and building. As I'm on the decks, the bloody roof just caved in. Loads of rainwater just covered me. And then another time, I was DJing there. Let's have a look at this. Another time. Can you bring up an image of Monroe's? Yeah, I can. Hold on. Just talk a minute, babe. Um, let me find a question. Something about Cancun. Why is everyone going to Cancun? Maybe because it's cheaper than everywhere else. And it is a very beautiful place. Cancun's awesome. It's, um, I did, I wasn't it's sure. good to go because it's not too far as well. How was the flight time? Like four hours? So yeah. It's relatively close. Um, beautiful weather. Um, Rebecca, why does Mike type like he's just woke up from a coma? I know. Because he's a boomer, that's why. You see this one here? Joy as Troubled Club is closed, Lanks Live. The image in the middle of the police with the shields. Another time I was DJing, and um, I'm, I'm DJing on the decks, and there used to be a lot of MCs, like guys that just rapping like shit. Some of them are good, cheese. Some of them are good, some of them are shit. And anyway, so they're all off their heads, and they're all rapping away. So I closed the door, and I took the microphone. And I'm DJing on the decks, and all of a sudden, Battering ram, door flies open, and uh, I think it was about 200 armed police raided the nightclub. Hands in the air! So I'm like, whoa. I put my hands in the air. They ripped the record off the deck. All the music stops. And everyone in the nightclub is standing there with their hands in the air because they raided the club and uh, it got shut down and that was that. So that was pretty eventful. Liam Ireland says, hi Mike, what's the most painful thing that's happened to you in a fight? Most painful thing that I can remember. I, well, gu I guess like UFC or just yeah. any kind of no, the, the, street fight. The last time we did one of these, when the end of the toll came off, that was pretty bad. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Most of the time when you're getting punched or kicked in the head, 
you don't feel it like that. I get that. Yeah, you don't. Like adrenaline and stuff. Leg kicks really hurt. Leg kicks really hurt. Body shots hurt, of course. Mike, what are your thoughts on the current state of the middleweight division? How does it feel looking at the state of things as a former champ? Um, who's currently the biggest bum in that division? I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to answer that. But I think the middleweight division's in a good place. It is. Israel Adesanya's just a cut above the rest. Jared Cannonier should provide an exciting matchup, but I'd probably favour the champ in that one. Jessica says, what do you guys like to do in Cancun? Relax or activities? Mm, and put a poll up. I'm you, all about the relaxation. She's all about the <laughs> relaxation. That's all she wants to do. Like, I can't lie there for too long. I don't mind it for a little bit, but then I'm like, I've got to do something. Put a poll on. And if you go on holiday, what do you want to do? Do you want to be busy? Do you want to lie by the pool and do absolutely jack shit? Or maybe a combination. No, maybe I don't like, like to do jack shit. Oh, just, you, you like to do jack shit. I don't like to get up early in the morning and go and do, like, activities and... Well, that's the problem, stuff. isn't it? Because any time you want to do some of that stuff, you know, like the snorkeling stuff or whatever, like a nice day trip out, it's, it's always so meet real. down at the jetty at 6 a.m. No, I'm on holiday. So I'm not doing that. Could we not meet at 9? <laughs> We're on holiday. Do you know what I, mean? I don't want to get up at... Because to meet at 6 a.m., she needs an hour to get ready because she doesn't leave the house without a scrape, you know. Even if I'm going in water, I have to, like... Yeah, she puts her makeup on and everything. So she needs an hour, which is it's good for me. It's, it's good for me, hour. let's be honest, because what I do is a lot of the time, it doesn't affect me. I lay in bed until, you know... To the very last minute. Because otherwise I get mad. I get stressed. Because if I get up and I get ready... And then she's still doing her thing. I'm, I'm like, oh. You just don't have any patience. After 23 years, I know how to manage my time with her. We've got a poll, though. What type of vacation do you prefer? Do things. Do We've... things. We flew all the way here, 58%. Lays in the sun. This is a rest, 38%. Yeah, but you don't want to do that. Exactly. I don't mind. I, I lays in the sun for a minute. I like to get in the water. I like to play with my son. Yeah, but it's you're not just lazing in the sun. You can go in the pool and then if you can go down by the beach and chill for a bit there and then you can order some food. A couple of cocktails. Uh, people watch. You can go and get some lunch. Come back. We're not literally just glued to our sun lounges all day. You had me at the cocktails. <laughs> Nick Diaz said he wants Usman. Could you imagine him dethroning Usman and leaving the Oxcon smoking a joint? All right, Ant, put a poll up because this is... I don't want to talk shit about Nick Diaz. I really... I, well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk shit. But I'm going, to be say, I'm going to say something that if it was taken out of context may feel like he was talking shit if there was a headline there. But I don't think Nick Diaz is going to beat Kamara Usman anytime soon. You know, he could definitely prove me wrong. Nick Diaz? Nick Diaz, yeah. Not judging by his last fight. Well, that's what I'm talking about. The last fight we saw against Robbie Lawler. Mm -hmm. Listen, I, I, I've got a tremendous amount of respect for Nick Diaz, so I'm not going to sit here and word it in such a way that would be deemed insulting. You know, the, the guy, I've got tremendous respect. He's a real fighter, and I admire the balls, and I admire the courage, and I admire the fighting spirit, and I admire the fact that he wants to go up and test himself against Kamara Usman and try and become the champion. I understand that he says he doesn't want to fight some young up-and-comer in the prime. He's 38 years old. He wants to be a part of big fights only. The reality, though, is that you just lost to Robbie Lawler. So, sadly... And also, you lost to Robbie Lawler in a fight that was scheduled for £170, and then at the last minute, you had to make it 185 The point of that, me bringing that up, is this. What if you were scheduled for a world title fight against Kamara Usman, and then you show a week of the fight and you say, yeah, man. Because that's what he's saying he thinks he wants, like he deserves. We right? saying, no, but, he, but what if he shows up and then mm -hmm. they can't put a title fight on? We just had this with Charles Oliveira and just engage it. Mm -hmm. You can't, you know, you, you got to... You're going to show that you're dependable. You know, if the UFC are going to spend a tremendous amount of money promoting these fights, which they do, to put these fights on, to hire out the venues and all the rest of it, they need to, have, they need to believe the two people that are showing up are at least going to try and show up on weight. And he never did that last time. And, of course, he lost the fight as well. So I struggled to see how we'd get a title fight. But put a poll up, on Nick Diaz versus uh, Kamara Usman. How do we think that would go? I feel like it's going to be an overwhelming majority. Uh, the options are, what, what are the options there on the polls? Because I can't bloody read it all the way over there. Read them out. 
Uh, Nick Diaz in 2022 beats anyone on his night 22%, is a top five fighter 0%, is top 10 8%, fun to watch but can't win big one 78%. Yeah, I know. The, uh, the, the poll I wanted, Ant, is does Nick Diaz beat Kamara Usman if they were to fight? That's what I want to hear. I he did that one before. He didn't do it. it Ant's got a mind of his own when it comes to these polls. Rebecca? Uh, Matt Carney says, as a couple, how have you changed each other? I imagine Rebecca's helped you develop, develop basic patience. Well, you think so, I haven't. Uh, what have you taught Rebecca? Whoa, 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 what whoa, have whoa. I taught you? What have you taught me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you have. You've taught me a lot. You have, you have. You've changed me a lot as a person for the better, of course, and I don't deny that. I've never denied that, you know what I mean? You're the, I always say, you're the best thing that ever happened to me and you're my greatest achievement in life. I would say that winning the UFC is all well and good, but you're my greatest achievement. So there you go. So stick that in your pipe and fucking smoke it. <laughs> Michael's really mean to her. He does love no, me I'm after all, guys. I'm not mean to her. She lives a life of bloody Riley. Um, I do live the life of Riley. So what have I taught you? Uh, <laughs> you've taught me to be confident. Yeah. You've taught me to... Um, not care what people think as much. Yep. Which is, a is that one. it? No, but you brought, I guess, not that I've ever been in a show, but you kind of bring me out of myself a little bit sometimes. Yep. Which is always helpful. Um, and yeah, you make me laugh. Jesus Christ, that's it. All right, okay. Um, um, all right, so Nick Diaz, Kamara Usman, who wins 82%. I thought it would have been higher, to be quite frank. I thought it would have been higher up in the 90s. As I say, no disrespect to Nick Diaz. He's a legend of the sport. He's a future Hall of Famer. That's an interesting poll, Ant. Do we think Nick Diaz will be in the Hall of Fame? I think he should be. He never became the champion. But he was a part of he's such a almost cultural icon when it comes to the sport of MMA. You know what I mean? He's, 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 got, he's got a cult-like following. Hi guys, new here, so apologies if you do or don't follow the world's strongest man. I don't follow it. I mean, I used to enjoy watching it. I used to enjoy watching it, but uh, not lately. Let's have a look. I lift a lot of weights though, so I should do. Do we even care anymore about the world's strongest man? Oh, it's coming up, Tuesday, May 24th. Uh, oh, it's, it's happening right now. Jeez Louise, babe, we, we, we wasn't aware of this. Hmm. How many, uh, let's have a look at this. This is interesting, actually. I don't, I, I don't lift heavy weights. I mean, it, it's all, you know, compared to some people. I might do, but I don't really. Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Here we go. World, oh, Jesus, fucking, I, 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 I gotta get rid of these, the ads and the pop-ups and the fucking thingy bobs. Jesus Christ. Isn't it so annoying on websites these days? The ads. Mm -hmm. World's strongest man. Deadlifts. Well, give me somebody. Yeah, he's lifting a lot of weight. I couldn't do that. I used to lift kind of heavy, but not anymore. But this is boring. Uh, thoughts on the flag ban in UFC? Ridiculous in my opinion. Um, with the flag ban itself, Obviously now I believe it relates to the situation in Ukraine and I, I, I don't actually know. Well, I know it's to do with that, but I don't know the actual reasons behind it. I haven't asked the UFC. I haven't spoken to anyone in with a position of authority. And said, I, what's the situation? Well, well they, they, they're, they're not allowing flags right now. And when Dana was asked about it at a press conference, he went, come on, you know why. I guess they don't want to politicise anything. They don't want fighters taking a stand in one regard or the other. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. That's purely assumption. But I will say this. They used to be banned already, but I think they can... I, I was going to say because you wanted to to fly the uk flag once didn't you correct i was just getting to that yeah because i was going to i wanted to walk out with the union jack 
And they said it's not part of the official Reebok policy. I think ever since Reebok left, they did away with that rule. And I was like, what? This is absolutely ridiculous because I've got this piece of memorabilia. I've got a flag that says Back Bisping on it. It's a Union Jack and all lot. And the UFC did this to me, uh, to me, for me. The UK UFC office did this. And it's an amazing piece of memorabilia. And it is somewhere in the house. What I should do is put it in a frame and put it on the wall because what the UFC did is every single tweet of good luck that came in for me on the Back Bisping campaign, they had printed onto this Union Jack. So it's a huge flag with Back Bisping and then like in like little letters, you can see when you look at it closely, it's all the good luck messages that were on Twitter. I mean, isn't that amazing? Absolutely phenomenal. And I was so touched and the UFC gave it to me the week of the fight for UFC 199 against Luke Rockhold. And then I was told that I wouldn't be able to walk out with it around my shoulders because it wasn't part of the official Reebok outfitting policy. And I would receive a fine. And I was like, well, I don't give a fuck. What is it going to be? Like five grand? I don't care. I'll pay it. And they went, no, I think the last one was 50 grand. I was like, yeah, fuck the flag. <laughs> what flag? What are you talking about? Um, we should hang that up in here. We should hang that up in here. We should. Ooh. Good idea, babe. All you got to do is put it in a box for me and just take care of it like a nice wife would. You know what I mean? Are you accusing me of not being a good wife? No, I'm just accusing you of not surprising me with memorabilia in shadow boxes and stuff. We agreed that that's douchey. The flag needs to go. We can just hang it. It doesn't need to be in a box. It ever needs to be a really big box. Just hang it and with pins. No, it needs to go in a frame to make hey. it a bit... No, it's got to go in a frame to make it more gangster. You're not just having a flag on the wall. They put it in a frame and it will protect it. Uh, should Nick Diaz go in the UFC Hall of Fame? 77% say yes. 23% say no. Interesting. I'm wondering why you would say no. I'm assuming because he... Um, Hasn't won the belt. I think he's had a Hall of Fame career, though. I mean, he, he's, he's fought a who's who of mixed martial arts. He's been around the sport forever. He's an old school guy. He's definitely a, uh, as they say, what, an OG? Kevin, uh, where'd it go? Kevin Brown says, why does your forehead have a mouth? A mouth? Yeah. Why am I just getting abused by everyone? Well, we talked about this. It's just ah, a stick man. Jesus Christ. Sorry. Turn that phone down. That is really loud and offensive. Hello. Sir, Rebecca, sir, Rebecca. Talk, talk. I'm just talking. We're on, we're on a live. Yes. It's Lucas talking and messing around. This is not Nick Diaz's record that we're looking at here. Yes. Nick Diaz, I, I'll Wikipedia. Yes, Jesus okay. Christ, just give me the guy's record, please. What is this? That's not his record. Oh, here we are. 26 wins, 10 losses. It's not a bad ratio, to be honest, when you consider the people that he's uh, fought. Robbie Lawler, Anderson Silva, George St. Pierre, Carlos Condit, all legendary fighters. Um, sadly, you know, it didn't go his way. BJ Penn, Paul Daly, Cyborg Santos, KJ Nunes, Hayato Sakurai. Mario Zaromskis, he was good. Scott Smith, Frank Shamrock, Thomas Denny, the wild man. You know, and it goes on and on and on. You know, and there he is down here in the early UFC days. As well, Sean Shirk, Joel Riggs, Riggs Diego Sanchez, Chez, <laughs> Drew Fickett, Carol Parisian, Robbie Lawler, Jeremy Jackson. I think he should be in the Hall of Fame for sure. Anyway, let's go back to the questions. Uh, let's talk UFC London. Do you think it will live up to the very high bar set in March? I assume you will be on commentary once again. Yep, I'll be there. In where? London. Oh, yeah. Tom Aspinall, Curtis Blades. Darren Till versus Jack Manson. It's a good fight. Paddy the Baddy versus Jordan Levitt. What do you think of that one? Uh, Paul Craig. Taking on Alexander Gustafsson. It's a good card, babe. Mm, I wish I was going. Come with. I can't. Why? Well, we have kids. Who's going to look after them? They can come with. Come oh. with. Come with. Come with us. When is this? Well, it's when we got. It's when I got back with my dad. 
Anyway, we'll talk about it later. Yeah, my old man's coming over. We'll see. My dad's coming to visit soon. Uh, and I was thinking about this. Would you be interested, and put a poll upon this, would you be interested if I did a live like this and my dad come and sits down and you can ask my dad some questions? Mm -hmm. What, what, what? I don't think that's going to work. Why not? Well, your dad's not going to... It's not going to flow. Wow, well, wow, well, wow. Well, Mike, Mike, let me tell you a story. Yeah, no, he would. He'd do I good. Do it. Do Put it. a polo pants. See what it. we think. Do you want right. to talk to Michael's dad? We do want to ask some questions about me. Heard versus... Uh, Johnny Depp. We talked. I know, we talked about this. Johnny all day. Bisping's brain is hungry because it's empty. That's why it has a mouth. <laughs> oh, God. What is he talking about? Like something Lucas would say. Yes, old school Mike. Your dad isn't hot. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Is my dad hot, babe? I'm sorry, Mr. Bisping, you're not hot. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's the big yam you're talking about there. <laughs> There'd be an issue if I did think he was hot. Yeah, but he's that gonna... would be a mate that would not sit well with you. My dad's got a certain charisma. <laughs> can we not? Can we move on, please? Oh, that's you're not being nice <laughs> to my dad. Champ, your wife is fire. Cheers, mate. She's all right. Uh, how would the relationship work if Rebecca was the UFC fighter and I was the stay-at-home husband? Oh, that would not work well. <laughs> it would not work at all. Mike's to, you like to, I was like, I called you Mike then. Mike, don't call me Mike. I know, I've never called you Mike in my life. Let's have a look at the poll results. Michael likes to be in control. So that's oh, 92% oh, oh. say yes. Okay. That's an overwhelming majority. Father, Mr. Bisping, you don't know this yet, but when you come out here to stay at my house on, on what you perceive to be a holiday, you're actually working on the YouTube channel. So get your bloody anecdotes ready. I was wrong. You were wrong, babe. You were wrong. You bloody uh, Rebecca, let me see your toes. <laughs> no. Show me your toes, babe. No. <laughs> uh, all right. If Nick Diaz is a Hall of Famer, then so is Rory McDonald. No, I disagree. Rory McDonald was a tremendous fighter and had some incredible wins and great performances in the UFC. But the body of work, the following that he has, the fan base, the legendary persona, yeah, bring on Papa Bisping. Okay, we'll do. When is Rebecca? Where is Rebecca from in Australia? I was born in Queensland, and then I moved to Perth, and then um, Adelaide in South Australia. So most of the time in Adelaide in South Australia. Uh, I, 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 yes, yeah, it's Paul Craig versus Volkan Uzdemir. Is that the fight that's happening? I thought it was Paul Craig versus um, Alexander Gustafsson. I must be wrong. Maybe, maybe they're both on the card. UFC London, July 23. See what we're working with. Uh, okay. Uh, where do I see the fight it's card? It's okay to have some silence. You just like make noises a lot. I don't have to make noises. You do. He cannot have silence. He, th he thinks it's uncomfortable. If there's a silence, he, he doesn't like it. He has to make noise. So let's try and have a sub bit of silence while you're scrolling. See, you're bullying me now. He can't. Just try. You're bullying me. I'm not. You, you're bullying. Just stop talking just for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, because we have 2,632 people, babe, that have tuned in to watch this. 89% now. Right. Interested in a poll with my dad, a live with my dad, okay. All right, well, let's have a look. Blades versus Aspinall. SB Nation. Yeah, I thought he was uh, fighting, uh, I, I might be wrong, maybe I just got my, a little confused. It wouldn't be the first time, eh? Uh, fight cards so far, here we go. Paddy Pimlet, Jordan Levitt, Jack Manson, Darren Till. Alexander Gustafsson, oh, Nikita Krylov, Charles Johnson, Mohamed Makaev, Mandy Bone versus Victoria Leonardo, Paul Craig taking on Vulcan fucking Uzdemir. That's a great fight, babe. Mm. That's a great fucking fight. So it is. Margie Casey. Margie Casey is taking on Demir Hadzevic in lightweight division, babe. He's from Yorkshire, so he talks like he's from, Aye. He's from Doncaster. 
Is he? He is, yeah. Really? He's from Doncaster. I don't know. Yeah, no, he is. Marjorie Casey, great fighter, by the way. Um, that's it's shaping up to be a great fight card so far. Paul Craig taking on. Um, oh, is that just the prelims? No, oh, main no, card. it's. I don't know if that's the main card. There's too many fights in there. They just it's announced bouts so far. But Paul Craig taking on Volkan Newsdemir. That is a massive, massive opportunity for Paul Craig because Paul is having a sensational run, and all of his fights are so exciting because he always seems to snatch a victory from the jaws of TV, defeat. Last time Nikita Krylov, I mean, he was. Remember that fight, babe. He, got, he was on his back early and he was eating a lot of big shots. Mm -hmm. And I could have sworn that Paul went out for a minute. Mm -hmm. It looked like he was unconscious, but another one of the shots brought him round. And I was like, holy shit. Because, listen, I like Paul. He's a great guy. I got so much respect for him. Just a really, really solid human being. And uh, he pulls out a triangle out of the bag. Was it a triangle to the armbar, I believe? And then, yeah, but that's like what he does in all of his fights. And he's on quite the run. So if he beats Volkan Uzdemir... Jesus Christ, he's real close to a title fight, so it's a big, big opportunity. Uh, London better be ready for Jordan Levitt's twerking. Jordan Levitt does like a little twerk. Jordan Levitt does like to do the splits. Is that the guy who's fighting Paddy Pimblett? Yeah, yeah. What do we think? Jordan Levitt versus Paddy Pimblett. Who wins and why? And put a poll up. Get to that big Jan, Mike. Where's Rebecca from in Australia? We did all that stuff. We'll go down here. How did we like Obi-Wan Kenobi? Never saw it, did we? No. We were talking about that last night. We yeah, we were. Watch like The Mandalorian and stuff. We need to watch some of that Star Wars stuff. We're always looking for stuff on TV. <laughs> we need to watch that Star Wars stuff. That Star Wars <laughs> stuff. You know that the, you know that intergalactic <laughs> space travel, space time <laughs> continuum, like lightsaber nonsense. <laughs> you know, that, that Star Wars -y stuff. Oh. <laughs> we'll take a little look at it. Uh who would win, Henry Cejudo or Master Yoda? <sighs> Both same weight class, similar heights, <laughs> similar size. I say Yoda. I say baby fucking Yoda. Mm. Baby Yoda all day long. He's going to twerk to victory. Jordan Levitt, by the way. I got Levitt by Bronco Buster, round two. Jordan by sub. Paddy the Baddy, yeah, a lot of people. Rebecca, did you make, did Mike even use triangle or guillotine to make you cook? <laughs> no, he has never. He used to, when you first started um, jiu-jitsu though, like um, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, he used to like, come here, can I borrow you a second? And he used to try and practice your moves on me. Not properly, but just get the little, yeah. I didn't know where that was going because he's like, did you ever <laughs> use the uh, the guillotine or a triangle to make you do the, the yeah. cooking? And you're like, well, no, but there was. And I was like, where's this going to go? <laughs> yeah. So Not everything's for the lives. It used to hurt. What does it feel like having a wife that's so much older than me? I think someone's messing with you, babe. Silence. Wow. Who's that from? I can hear crickets. One on one HQ. Or whatever your name is. That's like the biggest insult you could say to my wife. It actually, is. Very she, she's very, she's very concerned with the aging process. I, I am actually. I know. I know. It doesn't matter. They're clearly joking. Clearly joking. <laughs> clearly. Uh, who would Connor fight if I was a betting man? Well, Connor would fight anyone. Let's be honest, right? Say what you want about him, but he's, he's not shy. He's not afraid to step into the ring. Um, Can I say something? Go ahead. A lot of people have an issue with you slurping. They do? Mm, and I just heard it. What do you want me to do about it? Not slurp. Hold on. So, so hold on, hold on, hold on. So this is a slurp. Okay. And this is a non-slurp, is it? Exactly, yes. That requires a lot of effort, though. Let me try. That's just normal. I do not slurp at all. You don't need to inhale air. You're inhaling air. That's why you get gas. That's why you <laughs> fart all the time. I don't because fart all the time. Slurping and inhaling air. I don't fart all the time. Say that back. That's why I've been known to fart. <laughs> <laughs> and put a poll up on this. 
Right, listen, I'm serious. I'm serious on this. Um, Someone said, what are you drinking? It's water, guys. It's, wa <laughs> it's water. It's water. Um, put a poll up. Is a woman burping we've in, done this. in public equivalent to a guy farting? I think we've done this. Because it is. It's not. It is. For a woman to burp is so unladylike, it's equivalent to a man farting. In my humble opinion, maybe I'm wrong, but that's how I feel. Guys, and put a poll up on that. Back here, please. I'm trusting you. It is not. Well, you're going to talk by yourself for a second. Are you having a, where are you going? I'll be right back. Okay, he's going for a beer. I am. Are you? Yeah. Oh my God, I totally made that up. I was being funny. <laughs> he's actually going for a beer. All right. Um, not even close. I, I think you're talking about the burping situation. Um, okay, Rebecca is responsible of at least 75% of the reason why we're all still here. See, I'm oh. keeping the numbers going. How many people are actually watching right now? So, uh, okay. It's, it's, a, right. it's, it's a little low on the number count though, guys. Jeez Louise, I appreciate Faye. you all being here. Favourite movies. What are our favourite movies? Uh, Goodfellas. Oh, God, Ray Liotta just died, didn't he? That's a bloody shame. It really is a terrible shame. Poor guy. Ray Liotta was uh, an incredible actor. Loved him in Goodfellas. What a movie. You still haven't watched Goodfellas, have you, babe? I haven't. What's the poll say? Um, is a woman, is a woman belching? Yeah, belching, that makes it sound worse. Well, same thing. Uh, hang on a minute, it's disappeared. He's only 67, 67 oh, years yeah, old. super is, young. Isn't that really sad? How did he die, do we not know? No, so far he, he was filming a movie down in, I don't know, the Dominican Republic, I think, mm. and then just died in the night, I believe. Is a woman belching in public, unladylike? Yes, That's like tricky. a man farting. How oh, you do it? Um, no farting's worse is winning. That's not pretty close. It's pretty close though. See, see what I mean, babe? A lot of people have my opinion. It's, it's divided. It's divided. It's divided. Yeah, I, I gotta say, uh, from De definitely not the same. Definitely not the same. Ray Liotta, not that I know him or anything, but I read some news articles when I first learned of his death, and apparently, he was looking very unhealthy recently. Who said that? I noticed in a couple of articles, like his girlfriend or wife, whichever one it was, forgive me, was like helping him walk along and he was extremely mm. pale, extremely mm. pale and looking just generally unwell. Oh, yeah, poor that's guy. Too young. 60, was it 67? Yeah. How much was he worth upon his passing? That's a little, it's not important, but I am interested. Let's have a look. Um. Uh, Burps are classier. Correct. So it says his net worth was only 14 million. Kodiak 660. Rebecca, do you ever get your way? I do. She does, all the time, believe it or not. See, this is a joke. I know how to work him. This is a joke. 15 million. I would have thought that really older had more money than 15 million. Not that I'm not saying 15 million isn't a lot because it's a hell of a lot of money. Yeah, how how but, accurate is that? Well, I mean, they don't know. Probably way off because way off. it says that I'm lauded and I'm broke. But um, if you look at his, 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 what is it, his filmography, he's done so much work. I mean, 126 credits, wow. 126 credits, yeah. Not to mention Goodfellas. Listen, so like, um, talking about acting and stuff. So, you know, I've, I've done a few acting roles and when you acted in something, every time that uh, TV, movie, whatever it is, is heard again, you get residuals, you get checks through the mail. And I'm often getting them. I, yeah, I've got about 15 credits, something like that. So we get checks. And most of the time, they're so small, aren't they? It's like, am I, do I really have to pay this into the bank? She has There's to pay. There's no point. Sometimes they're like 0 
zero zero one cent, aren't they? I mean, something like that. Sometimes it's nice. You get like one from Triple X or something. It's like a few hundred dollars. You're like, oh, because you because you open it. And we, we always play the game. Like, How small is this check gonna be? I'm like, okay, seven cents or whatever. <laughs> it costs more money to print it off and put it in the mail and send mm -hmm. than what it's worth. And then we're like, how much is it? And then you open it and we're like, oh shit, that's $300, that one. That's nice. But they're few and far between. They're normally a few mm -hmm. cents. But I can imagine if you're someone like Ray Liotta in a movie like Goodfellas that gets shown all the time, that's constantly being watched, and you're the star of the said thing as opposed to me being goon number seven, um, those residual checks would be pretty big. be quite nice. We've got some super chats going on here, babe. Maybe I should start acting. Where do we think I'd be right now if I never started fighting? That is a good question. I would like to think that you would, well, I know you would have still been a successful gentleman. Yeah, something else would have come along. Definitely. Yeah, because I'm not, I'm, afraid of, I'm not afraid of hard work. That's the first ingredient, really. And you've got a good head on your shoulders, so, yeah. Yeah, something would have came along. I don't know what it would have been. I don't know. Yeah, Something. because because the reason I start, again it's I sitting here talking about myself and saying aren't I great or whatever, but you know you're interested, I guess. Um, the reason I got into fighting was to turn my life around. It wasn't because I mean yeah okay I was a martial artist and I was a a fighter if you will, but it seemed like an obvious path. Had that not been an avenue, had the UFC not been around, I probably would have tried to become a boxer for sure. Would have tried that. But outside of combat sports, there would have been something. I mean, I was talking about joining the army, wasn't I? You were, but you couldn't. I tried. You they couldn't. They wouldn't take they me. Wouldn't, what, they didn't have him. Can you believe this? The you army. Were, you were too psycho, apparently. The army wouldn't take me. You, that, were, you were too violent for the army. I was not too violent for the army. That's what they thought. It's not what they thought. Because you... Did you take the phone call? Yes, I know exactly. Michael, I took the call. I know why they didn't take you. It's because of your criminal record. And your criminal record was for fighting. You were too violent for the army. You couldn't possibly go and fight in a war. Oh, no. Because you were just too violent. Hold on a minute. This guy here has had a lot of fights on the street and he's won most of them? No, no. We are not sending this guy to a war zone. No. Absolutely not. Well... Queen's Lancashire Regiment of the British Infantry. You fucked up. <laughs> you know what I mean? You fucked up. Anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike and Rebecca, we are both rock solid people and we gel together well on screen. Oh. Aww. Well, we've been together well, a gonna, long time. We're going to wrap this up shortly. Rebecca is super hot. Well done, Bisping. She's all right. Stop with the compliments. Thank you, Mike Croft. I uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up in a bit. And, Ant, by the way, if, you, if you've got a life to live and you don't want to give up your Saturday manning polls every so often, you, you don't have to. <laughs> uh, let's go down the chat. Big, big, fight, um, big fan. Much love from Doncaster. Shout out Doncaster in the house. Aldo or Cruz at 145. Aldo or Cruz at 145. I'd probably have to go with Jose Aldo, I think. Yeah, I think. Just because of the takedown defense of Aldo, and I'd give him a striking advantage. But hey, Dominic Cruz is not a man to be underestimated. Uh, Newcastle meet and greet sold out in October. Is it really? Oh, mm. well. Rebecca, would you come to the Tales from the Octagon? No. No, but like, no jokes aside, because I know last time we didn't realise I was saying something rude. I never meant that. But if an opportunity presented itself for you to attend Tales from the Octagon tour with me in the UK, would you come? Um, I mean, I'd rather not, just because... <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? I love you dearly, but I just don't... I don't... You're not helping ticket drive. sales. They're like... It's going to be, no, don't get me wrong, it's, it's just so stressful, guys. You've got no idea. You've got no idea. I, and I feel like I'd make it worse. You'd get really grouchy, no offense. <laughs> We'd end up arguing, and that's not going to be good. You, you didn't like it when I used to hang around at UFC fights. Yeah, but... So don't pretend like all of a sudden you want me to hang around. I do want you, you to don't. hang around. You used to think that I was 
in the way. I'd never. You had to, you'd be like, well, I've got to worry about you. I'm like, well, no, you don't have to worry about me. I can look after myself. No, no. What she's referring to is when I used to fight and sometimes she would come, I would feel like I had. Like, because I had a lot on my mind, I had to get ready for the fight, I was trying to cut weight and all this type of stuff, I had tremendous amount of media obligations, like you always do when you're in the main event of a fight, you know, mm. there's a lot of things to do there. And then with Rebecca there as well, I then would feel the added pressure of trying to be a good partner, husband to you. I wanted to make sure you were okay, I wanted to make sure that you weren't bored, I wanted to make sure that, do you, do you know what I mean? I get it, I do. That, 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 that's what I meant, and I'm like... It, it, it would just cause an extra little bit of stress, not you causing stress, but because of me wanting to make sure that you're having a good time. And, mm -hmm. and, and realistically, all what I had to do was just be completely selfish. And I don't like to be completely selfish. That's what I meant, you know? I know. And I worded that so eloquently. People right now are watching this going, wow, wow, what a guy. Are you thinking that, guys? Are you thinking that? Wow. Um, Charlie Graham says it's 1.17 a.m. and he's eating cheese on toast. Love a bit of cheese Love on toast. Love cheese on toast. I make great cheese on she toast. She does do a good cheese Ooh, on toast. If you you're doing cheese on toast. I cheese on toast. It's really good. You, Americans like a grilled cheese, but guys, just try the straight up cheese on toast. It's better. Lots of salt and pepper though. No. Oh. No pepper, a bit of salt. And put a poll up. Cheese on toast. It's got to be a good quality cheese. Plain, with salt and pepper. Worcester sauce, all of the above. I'm telling you, cheese on toast with a bit of Worcester sauce on. Oh, Fruit and the salt Worcester and pepper. I, I, nothing. I was going to say something, but I decided not to. You say it. No, nothing. What were you going to say? I remember the first time I put Worcester sauce on your cheese on toast, he was furious with me. What do you mean I was furious? I made your cheese on toast and I put Worcester sauce on it and you're like, what's this? I didn't ask for this. Anyway, you tasted it and you loved it. You, were, you weren't happy with me. But I tasted it and I loved it. Yeah. And I take, took those words back. <laughs> I don't, I, you probably did. <laughs> yeah. Rebecca, uh, do we think Tony Ferguson could beat the Singaporean fighter, mm -hmm. Dang Lin Wang from one championship? Dang Lin Wang. Dang Lin Wang. All oh, right. Tony could take Dang Lin Wang, yes. Rebecca is super hot. Okay, wow, what a guy. See, that's what they are thinking. What a guy. Uh, Zach says... says Someone says, Zach, sauce, yes. Zach wants to know, we go and watch him dance at the Chibundales in Vegas? I'm always there. I've seen you. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it. We've been going for far too long. I feel bad that we went for so long and we're bored. Why do you boring. feel Boring. I don't know. It's like, I'm way they, too they, American for this cheese on toast stuff. Well. You should try it. Gorilla guys. Monsoon. To talking through the process. Okay, it's, it's super easy. It's this way is what easy. you're tuning in for. For the record, I love grilled cheese, and again, not going to bigin myself up, but I do make a great grilled she cheese. She makes a good grilled cheese, but I keep saying this make the grilled cheese, but add a bit of bacon, add a bit of turkey, put that inside the grilled cheese so it becomes a bacon grilled cheese. And she's like, no, no, no. That's the that's, Keep it simple. That's the future. No, it's, I, I I disagree. But uh, what was the question? T talk them through a grilled cheese or a cheese on toast. Do you want to know about? Would you watch a video with Matt showing how to make cheese on toast? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, no. Does not cook. I can cook cheese on toast though. Oh yeah, it's not take it through the process, but talk faster. <laughs> Do it. Okay, get a piece of bread, put it in the toaster. Okay. Butter, the butter that I like is the, um, the, Ker the is it Ker no, what is it? The Kerry's Irish butter, grass fed, amazing. It needs to be good quality butter. Smear that on heavily. Nice, mature, Americans say sharp, cheddar cheese, lots of it. Under the grill, Americans say broiler, same thing, till it's like all melted and slightly bubbling. Little sprinkle of salt, that peach looks hideous. Um, sprinkle of salt. Bob's your uncle. Cheese on toast. See, they, these ones aren't bad. They look good. That's a little overdone. A little I don't overdone. like it burnt like that, but that's that's it, guys. That's it. Amazing. And 75% of you want to see a Gold. video. Yes, wanna Kerry Gold is... Who said Kerry Gold? Was it in the chart? Yeah, Kerry Gold butter. It's so good. All right, well, 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 well you're going to get a video. Because Americans don't use butter on... 
the sandwiches. Yeah, which yeah. is a huge issue. Tell, talk to us. me about this. I don't understand it. And, and uh, English people, Australian people, pretty much people around the world, okay? You're going to be shocked when you hear this. Americans don't put butter on their sandwiches. When they make a sandwich, and don't get me wrong, Americans know how to make a good sandwich, let me tell you. And they know how to pack those bad boys. You know what I mean? We're talking big sandwiches. They pack it. They it's, pack a bad boy. It's full. But when you make a sandwich, the first thing you do is butter the bread. Yes. You put butter on, right? And then your cheese, your ham, your turkey, whatever, your tomatoes, blah, 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 blah. Cheese toasty. Woo, Josh right? 25. But yes. they don't put butter. It's so dry. And put a polyp. Or something in relation to that. You know, I'm curious. <laughs> I'm like, what would be the type of weight training routine and frequency whilst doing a Muay Thai every night? Um, well, Tricky Mickey, what are you trying to do? You're trying to fight? So you want a weight training routine to go with your Muay Thai training? Um, well, if you're training every night, I'm assuming it's because you want to fight. So you, as I said a second ago, I'm repeating myself, you want to complement what you're doing. So it would be everything fast and explosive. People often say, get rid of the cheese on toast. Yes. Um, people often say the, 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 the problem with lifting weights is that it slows you down. And, you know, the, 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 that's right and it's wrong at the same time. I mean, granted, yes, as you get bigger muscles, that could slow you down. Um, like, for example, now, I mean, I am just so jacked. Now, I've, I've, I've put muscle on because I lift weights most days now. I never used to. And uh, that's caused me to have a bit more muscle and it probably caused me to slow down a bit. But if you do a certain type of weight training, you do it a specific way, you build fast twitch muscle fiber, it'll actually make you faster. Boom, very fast, boom, fat, explode up, slow down. Explode up, slow down, or whatever it is. If you're always doing your movements fast and explosive, then you should build the correct type of muscle. Uh, and don't go too heavy. Don't go too heavy. Keep it explosive and light, I would say. Other people would disagree. They say, no, you want to do small, only six reps, as heavy as you can. You know, to, to build strength. I don't think you need that. Go on, babe. On the sandwich situation. Oh, the sandwich situation. We're going to go back. Apparently, and I, 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 I was aware of this. Americans like to use mayo as the butter. Butter on sandwiches. Necessary. Gross. Never tried it. How can you? Oh no, gosh. they do. They do. So that, um, I know what's going on. The Americans, they utilize mayonnaise as the, as, as, as the, the moisturizer. For the sandwich, okay? <laughs> the moistness comes from the, the, the condiments of choice. I feel like butter is healthier than mayo. Yeah, but mayo's delicious. You put the butter on, you put mayo on as well. Put on. Oh, let's go crazy. I would. Go to town. It's sparring light medium and never hard in Thai boxing. Hard but hard in BJJ. Effective for self-defense. Yeah, you don't want to spar too hard. A lot of the time, people spar way too hard. So don't spar too hard. The good thing about jiu-jitsu is that you can roll hard if you've got a good partner, you know, and try not to get hurt. But yeah, yeah, very effective for self-defense, Sam. 100%, mate. Can you get chicken salt on your fish and chips Ooh. in the US like in Australia? You cannot. That's why I have to buy it. What's buy chicken it. salt? I buy it on Amazon. It's salt that's flavoured with like a chicken seasoning and in Australia when you get um, fish and chips it's um, it's like a staple. You have to ask for it but yeah they'll put chicken salt on. It's really really nice. Um, they don't actually do fish and chips really out here. You don't go to the fish and chip shop because there aren't any. No you don't. You go to a restaurant Sadly. and anytime you walk in and you say they're English, oh you want fish and chips man? No. <laughs> um, and then the, the, the fish and chips is very nice. But it's very different, right? Yeah. Fish and chips in an English chippy mm, is nothing like so what you good. would expect. Now here. the pictures are going to look gross. It's going to look very beige and bland, but it's nice. Fish and chips from Chippy in England. <laughs> See what this brings up. Images. See, that's not it. That's not it. What do you mean? That's not it. That's not how it comes from a chippy in England. Maybe it is now because they're probably not allowed to do newspaper anymore. No, but it, but it, the, the, the chips were like soggier. Mm, you know yeah, what I mean? I have a soggy chip. Yeah. yeah it doesn't I'm look great, starving. 
It looks all right. That one looks good. That one in the middle. The Jewish history behind fish and chips? I had no idea about that. Anyway, um, enough fish and chip talk. How do you maintain such a healthy sleep schedule considering UFC is mostly on American time? Mm -hmm. I also see you tweeting late for a prit. Well, my friend, well, my friend, I live in America. <laughs> I, think they're, I think they're missing that crucial part of the puzzle. I do tweet yeah. late because it's, I'm eight hours behind. So, uh, Need Campbell, 93. Yeah, that's what's going on there, mate. We go to bed, well, oh. sleep very early. <laughs> we go to sleep very early. Very early. We go to sleep early. We go up to bed because it's her. She, <laughs> she made us do it. She made us, you know, slow the I short. drag you kicking and screaming. She does. She drags me to bed. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Uh, can ever have toast with butter, sugar, and cinnamon? Excuse me? No. Butter, sugar, and cinnamon. Oh, my Guys, God. Guys, you have to be American. Americans love cinnamon. I cannot stand cinnamon. Don't Damn, like that fade sucks. You have to use that thing. My fade, my haircut, it doesn't suck. I didn't say the question. Can't wait for the promo. Bisping film for UFC 275 to come out. Oh, Jag Gaming. How do you know about that? I did, I just filmed a, a promo for UFC 275 and I'm very much looking forward to seeing it. Uh, a very, very good piece that one of the UFC producers, Mr. Mike Ricci, came up with. I uh, filmed it the other day and I can't wait f f to see the final product and for the world to see it because I think it's going to be pretty funny, but also, you know, very good at the same time. So still, Mike, what are your max lifts, bench, deadlift, squat ever? Um, I remember back in the day, and I haven't done this for a long time, but I used to squat four plates either side. So what's that? 20, 40, 60, 80, 160 plus the bar, 180 kilos. So what's that? 360, about 400 pounds almost, something like that. Uh, but I don't really, I don't go ahead. I did squats this morning. I did, what did I do? 80 kilos. So, you know. What's that, 185 pounds? That's all. I, I don't go heavy on anything anymore. Bench these days, it's pitiful. It's pitiful, babe. It's quite pathetic. I don't know why you're with me. I don't know. I can't bench. Uh, uh, all right. Should we, leave, should we wrap this one up, babe? Yes. Mike, really cool person you are. When and why you don't fight Jake Paul after you shake his head you cut his beard. What is you? Shout out from Adelaide, babe. Oh, hello. Bob, you try a pie floater. Oh. What's a pie floater? I don't know. Google it. Should we have a look what a pie floater is? Yes. Okay, I don't know. Sounds great. When's the last time you were in Adelaide, I babe? Pie. Um. 2016. When? Babe, 2016. Babe, a pie floater is an Australian dish particularly common in Adelaide. You don't even know what a pie floater is. I don't know. What does it consider? Meat pie? Oh, well, I don't like pea soup, so that's with, probably why. It consists oh. of a meat pie and a thick pea soup, typically with the addition of tomato sauce, believed to have been first created in the 1890s. The pie floater gained popularity as a meat meal sold by South Australian pie carts. Wow. Now I know. I mean, if you considered yourself a real Australian, you'd know this. Well, I know. All That's right. Cool. Thanks for the response about the weight training arm and Aussie. All right. Well, Tricky Mickey, big up yourself, bruv. Hi from Cape Town. Don't stress. I'm safe from any late night walks in the CBD. Mm -hmm. Boom. Good. Glad Good. I'm glad. It. Glad to hear that. All right, guys. Well, listen, Rebecca, would you like to say some final words to the, to the very kind people that are watching um, this? Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in, as always. And entertaining us and yeah. asking all wonderful questions don't forget to take a dessert that's the purpose of a fine meal lad it is what's that should we go out for dinner tonight i don't think so we're doing dinner and top gun what are you talking about I don't... we're going to watch top gun tonight and we're doing dinner and top gun okay see what i mean see what i mean Hold on, we've got more chats. I've got to do the chats. By the way, when we do this stuff, we do this because we enjoy it, don't we, babe? Of course. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, 
people think we're looking for attention or whatever. This is a lot of fun. I don't know if you've ever had a YouTube channel with a lot of people and a lot of people interacting like this and asking questions and giving us things to talk about. And we yeah, have a laugh, don't we? Yeah, no, it's, it's fun. fun. Like it. It's mm. a great way. It's awesome. You know what I mean? It might seem a little narcissistic, <laughs> might seem a little bit arrogant and egotistical, but it's 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 a lot of fun. We have a well, channel. That's what they think. Don't we have it. a we have a subscriber base, and you know we we try to interact with them as much as possible to thank you for the community that we have and the memberships, of course. Um, so thank you all for being a part of it, and we do appreciate it. We need a UFC strike NFT. Do you get paid from them? Talk Rebecca, to Brian about say it. Say hi to the believers. Say hi to the believers. Hello, believers. Gonna start putting up some Believe You Me clips on the YouTube channel as well. So keep an eye out for that one. Rebecca, how did you end up in the UK? You've talked about that a lot. Sorry, mate. Uh, English muffins are great. Can't beat an English muffin. <sighs> Michael, do you have the eye of the tiger? I do. You have the eye of the tiger. Rising up. Back on my feet, to my passion for glory. That's not the words. I love that song though. Survivor, Eye of the Tiger. I hear that song, and whatever it is, it's going to a 10. I got a shadow box. I got a. It's the best. You don't like it, dear babe? Not really. The Rocky soundtrack is the best thing ever. It's the best soundtrack ever. It's amazing. It's amazing. Come on. Thank you for the entertaining live stream, Michael and Rebecca. Well, Andrew Buck, thank you for tuning in and watching. Jacked up, Top Gun was great. If you like the original, you'll love it. More plates, more dates, reaction videos, when or lucky enough. Um, Mike's the best. So glad you dropped that Lewis guy and started dating Anthony Smith. Mm -hmm. People loving Anthony Smith on the podcast. He's great. He's hilarious. And Rebecca say hi to the Queefers and Believers. Hi, Queefers and Believers. What's Queefers? I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't know. Carpool karaoke. Bisping, can you please tell my older brother to stop waking me up in the middle of the night when he games? It's all he does. I work early. Oh, God. Oh. Irving Ramirez, you poor guy. He's your little brother. Dead arm. Boom. <laughs> He's your little brother. You are the king of it. It's like if you're in prison, right, you get the top bunk. If I was in prison, I'd want the bottom bunk. What did he get in prison? What's the most desirable one, the top bunk or the bottom bunk? I know when I was in prison, I had the top bunk. I feel like it's a status thing, like if... But like in the middle of the night, you don't want to get out of bed and have to climb down because you need to pee. You just want to roll out. It's one step, bosh, there we go. Toilet within walking distance, spitting distance. Probably can just stand there and pee. It's probably when right I was in prison, I was locked up with a very weird arsonist that hardly ever spoke. It's probably terrified of me. I've never rocked a mullet. Can you please give a shout out to my f stick friend? Oh, see, I said, so I knew Queefers was, was rude. What is it? I don't know, everyone's laughing at it. <laughs> Bilzerian porn guy doesn't like Anthony Smith. Oh God, we opened the right kind of fucking shit worms with that one. Uh, what happened between you and Lewis? Never mind. Nice reaction to the Champions League final. Okay, I would take the low bunk. Never turn your back on an inmate, mate. Mm. Lesson learned. Did Lesson you turn learned. your back on the inmates? Turn my back. I did. Might stop touching your good eye. I have to, otherwise I can't see. What would happen if you just left it? Would it fix itself? The contact, if you didn't keep moving it? I don't know. Should I give it a try? Yeah, we just... I think that's, it's weighted, apparently, so it's meant to, you know. Yeah. So it says, have you ever been in a street fight where you're like, whoa, this guy's better than I expected? Yes, <laughs> many times. You're like, oh shit, fucking hell, this guy's not bad actually, is he? He's pretty tough, he knows what he's doing, mm. you know. Uh, Mike, what do you think about Khabib out grappling Rockhold? Never saw it, and that's it. We're done, we're over, we're finished. That was abrupt. We're, we're, we're leaving. We've got one more super chat. You guys make such a good pair. Your dashing looks and her windswept beauty. Reminiscent of Meryl Streep. Ah. Let's have a look at Meryl Streep. 
No, she's no. very attractive, but I don't you know. You look she's, like Meryl Streep. I don't know if she's known for her beauty. <laughs> Meryl Streep. Maybe a young. No, Meryl he's Streep. talking about her right there. Okay. All right. She's attractive. She's a very attractive woman. She is. On that note, guys, <laughs> thank you very much. One on one, one HQ, IQ, IQ. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you all. And uh, we'll be back real soon.